But okay, now that we're done uh, testing out Akron and pulling for her and everything, it's about night time we began the next chapter of Panacani's story. The Devil in Velvet. An ominous title, I gotta say. And yeah, just gonna pick up when we last left off with um Robin being dead, or <laughs> presumably dead, in the um in the dreamscape. And yeah, we'll see what Aventurine's proposal is and everything. So I guess without further ado, let us go ahead and begin and uh, get back to good old um, Aventurine, even though I don't trust him. <laughs> oh, friend. My expression wasn't much better than yours when I first saw this. Your eyes aren't deceiving you. It's her. The famous singer, Robin. Okay, explain why is she dead? But how's that possible? Could Robin actually... How's that possible? Well, first of all, can I just say that this had nothing to do with me? <laughs> I'm just an unlucky bystander here. The family can testify for me. If you don't believe me, just ask anyone in the Bloodhound family. They hate me and they hate the IPC. So they'd never lie. <laughs> really now? This is not where the crime happened. What I showed you was a memory. The most basic light cone manifesting tech. Oh. Authorized by the Garden of Recollection and owned by the IPC. Did you really think the Galaxy Rangers were outsiders this whole time? Hmm. Panacone has made a solemn commitment to protect the safety of anyone inside a family dream. Any person in distress will be forcibly awakened and safely returned to reality. Okay. What gives them the confidence to make such conclusive statements? Because behind this promise is the harmony. The family's Dreamweavers link up their minds together to construct an unbreakable defensive line. Hmm. Breaking through this line of defense to create death in the dreamscape. Oh. Not even a memo keeper could do that without the family's permission. Who could have done it, friend? Friend? Is her, Don't call me friend. A <laughs> girl who calls herself a Galaxy Ranger. An imposter. An unsought guest. An emanator who hides her true identity. Mm. Ifrit's death was a foregone conclusion. And Robin? Her misfortune was staring right at her. Who will be the next to die? If you're telling the truth, why is... <laughs> why is Akron doing this? This is really hard to take in. That's just one side of the story. If that's the case, I can't trust anyone. It's fine. Listen to your gut. Building trust always takes time. And I'm willing to wait. Hmm. I just hope you realize that wherever that legacy is concerned, covert plans are already underway throughout Panacone. Everyone's got their own agenda. Careful you don't get stuck on the wrong side. If I were you, I'd keep my distance from Agaron. After all, any schemes out in the open are always going to be better than a monster in the shadows. Right? I don't know about that, but cool. Who's to say there isn't an even deeper conspiracy lurking beneath the surface? Memo Keeper, I think our little deal is finished. Oh boy. Venturine is telling the truth. This memory is a real one. And there's no sign of any distortion grafting on. Okay, but the question is why? <laughs> why is somebody... Why is Akron, presumably, killing these people? Also, yeah, what, what's Jeff doing here? So, I'm... Okay, just... Based on what of Aventurine is saying... Um... Akron is going... Is somehow led the Something Onto Death meme in here. Somehow. That's what he's saying, I believe. Unless I'm thoroughly misinterpreting it. But, yeah. He, he's saying he's the cause of all this, like, death and destruction in the dreamscape. Which leads me to the question, why and how... And yeah, and everything. The IPC is not the garden. And there are real limits to what they can actually do. But you know all this. 
Friend, let's not beat around the bush here. The thing is, I want to reach out personally to team up with the Astral Express. Huh. I told you, I'm just not interested in scrambling for the legacy. I just came to Pentagoni for work. I'm here to retrieve some lost property for the IPC, if you catch my drift. I'm talking ownership of this frontier prison. This has all become a bad debt thanks to the cancer of all worlds. What? The IPC has tried sitting down for negotiations time and again, but the family wouldn't even take our calls. Wait, what? So there is a Stella on here. What? Is it? You have no idea how difficult these people are to deal with. Put it this way. They've hushed up the existence of death before, so they can definitely cover up any news about Robin's death. Mm. It'll just quietly float off like a bubble and... Pop. Ugh. Nobody ever being the wiser. Somebody's definitely definitely gonna notice when an idol goes missing, right? <laughs> like, come on. Unless they're seriously saying, yeah, unless they're seriously saying that <laughs> they're gonna like try and get Sparkle or something to like replace them, or yeah, or shit like that. Which I don't think is gonna be the case, because otherwise, yeah, she's gonna slip up eventually. And that's not fair, right? So then, friend. Friend. I need your help. Don't call me friend, pal. Uh, what kind of help? I got something on right now. I can't trust you. I'll just ask what kind of help. I have but only one goal. The family's front door is like a high wall. And to tear the whole thing down, I'll have to dig out a few chunks first. Once I find a weak point, the IPC will have plenty of means. Now we have our chance. So long as we can get to the truth behind her death, we can have justice for Robin. <laughs> While also gaining a valuable bargaining chip for bringing the family to the table. Truly a once in a blue moon opportunity. I've been investigating and making lots of friends all over Panacone precisely for this very moment. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, Sparkle did offer to like take over Robin, but yeah, Sunday declined. This oh, forgot about that. would be extremely bad for the family, so they'll be doing everything they can to stop it leaking, especially to the IPC. But I trust that there are still a few factions that remain exceptions, and that's why I need you all. The reputation of the Astral Express precedes you, and the Harmony will give you the fairest of appraisals. Will she? You get to find out really what happened and seek justice. And I get to put it toward completing my mission for the IPC. It's what you call a win-win situation. You want to take advantage of the family's trust in us. The nameless would never associate with the IPC. A decision like this is way above my pay grade. <laughs> Don't worry, just head back and talk things over with your companions. That navigator is really smart. Uh, she must understand the value of this deal. Hey. Look, here's my contact details. If you come to any conclusions, call me. Oh, and take this. A thorough investigation can always use a little more funding. Don't mention it. So long, friend. I really am looking forward to uncovering the truth about death with everyone. Hmm. Aventurine just sauntered off. He really doesn't mean to force it, but something still seems off. Yeah, you're telling me. What now? What are your plans? Black Swan. What is she thinking? Hmm. Why is she so pretty? Hmm. Hey, 50,000 credits. Thanks, Aventurine. <laughs> Die, Black Swan. Forth. Let me traumatize you again. <laughs> On the surface, this doesn't look like a bad deal for you. But Aventurine is a shrewd merchant whose scheme won't just be as simple as it appears to be. Yeah, huh? He doesn't know about Miss Firefly yet. Uh. But, judging by your reaction, he may have noticed something going on and deliberately shifted topics to the truth of death to try and pull you in line with his way of thinking. That's quick thinking and very sound logic. Aventurine is no fool. And working with him definitely has its dangers. The nameless cannot turn a blind eye to evil. For Firefly's sake, we must get to the bottom of all this. Playing it seems to be a smart move. Can I toss a die and have it decide for me? 
<laughs> no, I can't even do a dice roll. Um, uh, hmm. The nameless can turn a blind eye to evil. Hmm. Yeah. But you're talking about real evil. Anyway, be careful out there. There's more than one way to blaze a trail. In a dark forest beset by wolves, ensuring your own escape to safety should be your primary concern. As for the other questions... Did death kill Robin? I'm not sure the two cases were committed by the same culprit, but that massive wound looked like its winged blade. Mm. We've all witnessed it in action before. Plus, it seems unlikely that there would be two lethal entities loose in the dreamscape. True. Do you think this connected Acheron? Sorry, I can't answer that question. That ranger is shrouded in mystery. <laughs> I'm afraid no one is capable of providing an answer. Not even me. The last time I tried to peer into her memories, uh, yeah, some, some weird shit happened, man. But without a doubt, she is the most special guest at this banquet. Mm. It's like a venturing said just then. It's best to keep your distance from her. Ah, too late. I pulled for her. Have you noticed anything unusual? Two victims appearing one after the other in a very short time span. In and of itself, that's very unusual. Two possibilities. The collapse of Panacone's dreamscape has started speeding up. Making death extremely agitated and weakening the family's protections. Or, everything has been planned out and executed by someone. If someone has chosen these victims deliberately, mm. first a smuggler, then a family celebrity, then this murderer's motives are worth thoroughly chewing over. I don't have any other questions. It's all happened so quickly, I can only make a conjecture. After leaving here, go have a chat with your companions. I hope you can clarify the source of this confusion. Hmm. Black Swan leaves a chaotic dreamscape. Come hmm. on, this way. <laughs> it's a short walk. Don't get lost. Not right now, birdies. <laughs> I, I, uh, not right now. Either that you can't order, getting too traumatized to take a peek and learn nothing. Hmm. hmm. Also, congrats on getting Akron. Hey, hmm. thanks, Landers. Also, yeah, I saw that idol for a second there. <laughs> Fucking Akron's like eating a peach or something, which I think, um, Raiden May also likes peaches as well. From what I've heard, anyways. <laughs> From like a random, random post I read on like Reddit or something. <sighs> Okay, but yeah, let's walk through the scene of Firefly's uh, death once again, because I don't- I need more trauma in my life, sure. Nope. Oh, we're getting this out of here? Way, this is where we part ways. All of this is like... a nightmare. Yep. Unfortunately, the remembrance doesn't lie. What we just saw is the reality that happened. And it won't fade from our minds just because we wake up. But follow your heart and don't be afraid. We all walk through this world casting shadows of different lengths. And ultimately, all we leave behind are precious memories. Ah, hold on just a sec. Boxman gently touches the root of her ear and leaving a cool sensation. Then she hands over a card to you. A small parting gift. Hmm. If one day you unfortunately fall into the deep waters of the memory zone, and there's no memo keeper to join you, hopefully it can guide you on my behalf. I also pay great attention to the ways of the world. Just think of this as an apology from me for hiding something from you. Thank you. That's it? <laughs> Any more? I have something private to take care of regarding that galaxy ranger. Oh boy. Let's leave things there, shall we? What fascinating memories will you bring for me next time we meet? I sincerely look forward to them. Hmm. Yep. Oh, well, back, back in Pentaconi. Space Edge, you got the hotel in the dreamscape? Space Edge, Space Edge, everyone's in trouble. Uh, because separated in the memory zone, but Space Edge is with the memory keeper. I feel so angsty. Help! March, stay calm. 
Do we need to get out the express and help? Not at the moment. Sure, just let me know if you need me. <laughs> okay, so Donald just still gonna be there. <laughs> God damn it. The Riviera Hotel is in the real world is very much calm. Not much happening. Uh, I'm done. Where are you? I invest. I finished my invest game on my side. Where should I go to meet you? Space Edge. Space Edge. It's great to see that you're safe. That lady didn't do anything bad, did she? I'm sorry about what happened to Firefly. The scene had been cordoned off by the family. We're wrapping up negotiations with some uh, some family delegates. Let's meet up somewhere near the clocky statue later. A family wrap. Is Himiko okay? Oh, I and that's a card she gave me. What is on that card? Hang on. I can't tell. I'm not sure what that is. Hmm. In the cards art, she casts a gaze into the mist of destiny. Oh, that's probably of her. But yeah, Black Swan herself. Okay. Okay, but yeah, a representative from the family. Hmm, wonder who that could be. Yeah, I don't know why Dong is just chilling and vibing on the on the freaking uh, Astro Express while all this shit is just going about. I mean, clearly need his help, but he, he he's just like, nah, my arc is done. <laughs> I should take a moment to gather my thoughts and wait for everyone to arrive. Hmm. Time for thought gathering. Some time ago, deep in the memory zone. Oh. Better oh shit! Bleed now. Yes! Ranger. Let me see Do the finale of this. Still dream hunter. Of those slain by your hand. <sighs> Oh, shit. <laughs> Days ago, Everplay Mansion. What? Uh, we're just flashing back to everything? Oh, there he is. This is how he died? It appears the outcome has already been determined. We're still alive. As are you. We still have room to make a choice. Leave the music box behind. And then go. A music box? Choice. The bloody trail of the destruction leaves no room for hesitation. The Taurus Fire Demon. Even if you sacrifice your life for that eon, you won't get special treatment. Ranger, you tread the narrow path of the hunt. You could never understand. The hunt? Wait, is she an emir to hunt? No, no way. We come from the fire and are born bathed in fire. We spread, burn, and destroy until all the kindling has burned out and we leave only ashes on the ground. Yeah, <laughs> rip everybody who wants it to be a Duke Inferno main. Burning forms the entire life of a fire. From the beginning to the end. We are born to die just to put into practice a profile of another universal truth. All things are created for the destruction. Your companions don't seem to think so. They fight for your chance at survival. They are my children, and just as I was. They are flames mm. and have yet to burn my heart. They're still young, I don't But my flames are faint. And time is running out. Can you see the planet of festivities in the distance? I plan to bring purgatory with me there. And before that... I must surpass you. The famous last words. Why? Because on the path they have forged, you have traveled farther than I have. On the path they have forged, you've traveled farther than I have. Emanator. <sighs> you cannot hide your true identity. Draw that sword, for we shall indeed 
remain here, bound to fight a decisive battle to the death. Damn. I choose this. Yeah, I'm gonna take a fucking. This is a fucking badass screenshot, honestly. Let me just take that real quick. Holy shit, that's a fucking badass scene. Destruction is intense, but brief. To gravely claim to life is to endure an endlessly prolonged existence. Even if the answer turns out to be your own destruction. What is important is not the answer, but that it exists, hmm. just as you exist. Everything exists to be destroyed. Emanators are no different. Just as even sweet dreams may be born of the void, the so-called impossible is merely something that is yet to happen. No. Man, I love his voice so much, and he's such a cool de character design. So, part of me is somewhat pissed that he's dead. Uh, he would have been such a cool antagonist. All right. I accept. What? You shall witness the most brilliant. Oh, they accept a duel to the death. Fire in existence. May this flame illuminate the farthest reaches of your bottomless dream. A bottomless dream. Yes, that's right. But you've made one small mistake. This blade remains in its scabbard not out of pity or scorn. It's a personal secret that I don't want to disclose, but... Perhaps out of reciprocity. She says this as her hand gently rests on the hilt of her sword. I'll reveal the truth to you. The hunt is not the path I truly follow. Okay, yeah, I knew she wasn't uh, like a hunt. Like a yeah, person. Shing. May death be the end of your boundless dream. Oh. <laughs> Guiding you back to the waking world. Oh. I still see them in my dreams. Hold it. Your time hasn't come yet. What? They called a truce? My time. Huh? I've seen many clever disguises that can conceal appearances. But they can never cover up who a person really is. Oh? And you're no different. Wait, are we gonna get a reveal? Of who... Of who Sam is? You had no desire to kill the Trailblazer. You only did what you did to drive me and the Memo Keeper away, but... Why? Uh? <sighs> hmm... Did Destiny's Slave make you do it? Destiny's Slave? Where have I heard that before? You know, Elio. Elio, right, right, right. I thought this is just the kind of thing that'd get written into your script. My script has always been brief. Other than that, anything beyond that is unnecessary. He knows my nature. There is but a single destiny from which no one can escape. And until then, I hold the privilege of choice. However, you appear to be ignorant of this. So it's time for me to inquire. Who exactly are you? Not your enemy, perhaps. Huh. I, I didn't think they called a truce, to be honest. Huh. That's not what I asked. Yeah, answer the damn question, bitch. I don't deserve your curiosity. Ah. Loners wandering the cosmos always have their secrets. Take me. I'm wanted by the IPC, so it's little wonder that I know something about the Stellaron Hunters. That's all. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can help. What reason would you have for doing that? I tend to forget things. Which is why 
Rather than memories, I'm accustomed to using my emotions to capture what I normally wouldn't otherwise. So... I know who was inside that cold armor. Oh! Uh, oh! Uh, oh! Uh. How about it? Ready to take off that armor and sit down for a talk? Is it a reveal time? It's not yet time. Ah, damn it. I don't need help, but I can give you a suggestion that would make things better for you and me. If your goal is the Watchmaker's legacy, then go look into the family. Mm. Not only are they covering up the existence of death, but they're burying the past and the truth about what happens inside the dreamscape. Already on it. And the Astral Express is no enemy of yours. Okay, so we're all friends here, right? Right? I know that. I just never expected to hear you say it. What's next then? The Trailblazer has been taken by Black Swan. Will you go look for her? No need for that. No harm in mentioning that Elio's only given me one instruction. Oh. Get all of the Astral Express to track down the Grand Legacy. The Grand Legacy. I tried settling this in an easier and more direct way. But as you can see, here I am confronting you. I failed. Can't ever go against the script. Hmm. The so-called impossible is merely something that has yet to happen. That's it. Before we split, can I ask you one more thing? Is there anything else in your script about me? Uh? I'd like to know what kind of footnote I get to leave in that future foreseen by destiny. Hmm, more of the red text stuff. Still not entirely sure what the red text stuff is about. Like, is it her manipulating our thoughts or is it her... Hmm, or something. Who knows? Maybe it's her other self speaking to us or something. Unfortunately, not a thing came up. I knew it. Hmm. Hang on. I... Don't. You don't? Don't. What? Your first question was... Do you still have dreams? About everyone who died because of you. Oh. I don't. Never have. I don't regret killing anybody. I was born without the ability oh, never mind. to dream. I live for this cold, harsh reality. For a little light. And to burn. To keep... On burning. Oh, jeez. Until I turn to ash. So, I really envy you. Gotta say, I fucking love Sam's voice. I know why. It's just so fucking harsh and whatnot, but there's somewhat of a kindness behind it. Uh, it's hard to describe it, but yeah, it's really fucking cool. <laughs> Is that so? And you're already living in the waking world. Hmm. Did not expect this fight to come to a truce, if I'm gonna be honest. Present day golden hour. We oh. heard about Miss Firefly from Black Swan. But we never expected Miss Robin to Hmm. Hey, the gang's all together now. <sighs> I'm sorry that I couldn't be with you then. Reality cruises on in serenity while undercurrents bubble up from the dreamscape. Just like that memo keeper said. Stay strong, everyone. We can still do what we can for them. Starting with finding the murderer. Let's recap everything then. The trailblazer just reminded me of something. March. 
Do you remember what that family rep who negotiated with us said? Uh, indeed, we trust that the Nameless has nothing to do with this. Hmm. And we also beg each of you to help assist the family in verifying the identity of the deceased. Uh, that's how it was put, in reference to Miss Firefly. Looking back, he seemed a little evasive at the time. And he also failed to mention anything about the earlier murder, too. The family's planning on covering up all news about Miss Robin's death. Uh -huh. If news gets out, Penicone is going to turn into a bloodbath. But the murder that followed closely after was obviously beyond their anticipation. The family had to try and turn things to their advantage by bringing in reinforcements from outside. The Charmony Festival is nearly here. They must be snowed under. It may also be that Miss Firefly's murder had so many witnesses that it couldn't be covered up. So they went with the flow and let more people on the scene to control the situation. Hmm. Well, you mean you say so many witnesses, but it was just us three. I mean, I guess that's because there are many in those in these guys' eyes. After all, the nature of the two murders is fundamentally different. The family's first protective measure should be against malicious actors among the guests, such as that IPC envoy. He's really up to no good. Eventually, he's on guard against Acheron. Yeah. Indeed. He was particularly concerned about that Galaxy Ranger. Are we missing the forest for the trees here? I always felt that Aventurine's reasons for accusing Miss Acheron were highly subtle. Can we believe him? At this point, I'm afraid the only ones we can trust are ourselves. Yeah, everybody has a fucking ulterior motive. Look, let's try to gather intel first and then list all the possible outcomes we can. Then we go through them, eliminating contradictions one by one. The fewer facts remaining, the closer we are to the truth. To the truth. I've still got this sense of foreboding. It's like we're stuck in a whirlpool spinning around that legacy even after everything that's happened uh, this time we're playing the role of a real detective but before we start what are we going to say to the family and adventuring as i see things the family harbors no ill will towards the astral express if they didn't trust the crew they wouldn't have casually commissioned outsiders to investigate a case that's in all likelihood a scandal Plus, this is the family's turf. Teaming up with them should make things easier for us in the future. I mean, true, but then there's also that other thing that Sunday has planned, which I don't think sounds too nice. <laughs> As for that Aventurine, well, I'd like to hear your thoughts. He's complex. He deliberately slow played his hand during negotiations while running circles around us all the while. He appealed convincingly to both reason and emotion. It wasn't forced, but the intent was obvious. Still, it's good to have contacts among all this uncertainty. Adventurine showed his skills, and as far as our interests are aligned, he can become a reliable ally. We also need to keep a certain distance from the family. Never let them get too close. Teaming up with the IPC helps balance that out. If either side makes a move, we have the option to pull out. Hmm. Right, and there's also the possibility of, yeah, Sparkle impersonating somebody. Because, you know, she's involved now, and, uh, not sure what she's doing, but... Yeah, definitely gotta be out on the lookout for her. So, you suggest accepting Aventurine's proposal to team up? Hmm. Yes. It's risky, but we can only wait until both sides have played their cards before making any further judgments. I get why, but there's a whole lot of bad guys and girls around here, and I'm worried about getting stabbed in the back. She's been bullied a few times now, and I can't stand it anymore. It's fine. Let's focus on the bigger picture for now. It's fine. I got a lot out of him, too. It's cool. He can bully me whenever. <laughs> it's a serious fucking situation, and the trip leads always have to crack a joke. It's cool. You can bully me whenever. Uh, you... <laughs> Uh, forget about it. Just let me keep an eye on him. If that doesn't work, we can just turn the tables and use him instead. 
Then, could you please reply to Aventurine? Everyone, take this time to put together your thoughts. Okay. Oh, yeah, well, don't want to do this, but we have no choice, it seems. All right, fine. We'll collaborate, Aventurine. <laughs> I just realized this fucking subtitle is like, always open to pull for your game account. Yeah, nah. Aventurine, I'm not letting you do any pulling. Wonderful. Your response came faster than expected. Uh, from now on, we'll all be in this together. Here's a small tip. Uh, here's a small something for our upcoming partnership. 100,000. Jeez. Thanks, boss. That's a lot of money. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Give me another hundred Cambridge boy. <laughs> Oops, I sent Preds. I pressed send too early. Here's a little extra for good luck with this new gig. Damn, two hundred thousand. All right. Just sign into space suit. Uh, the family is going to sweep Robin's case under the rug for as long as they can. So for so her case is only a secret between us. Other than that, they. <coughs> Sorry, uh, but the other case, that depends on what excuses they have prepared for you guys. I'll take my leave for now, and I look forward to outstanding performances from you guys. Alright. Like the deal has been set. Oh Let's man, I, everyone about it. holy shit, I did get 200k. Nice. Also, what's a sparkling thing on the ground? Clucky smile forever radiance. It's not a nervous dream. Uh, his gaze can reach every dark corner in the realm of dreams. Oh, oh, that was it. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, okay. Good for you. Uh, yeah. What do you think, Kimiko? Avengerine's goal is to try and recapture Penacony for IPC. To do this, he'll have to bring down the family in its entirety to create a big enough chance. The existence of death will be covered up by the family. So how does he plan on taking them down? It's got to be something important enough that everyone will notice. Mm. But it also can't be anything too out in the open. Perhaps he's going for the hotel? An attack on the hotel guests? Unlikely. Pinnacone's guests include quite a few bigwigs known throughout the whole cosmos. People who, not even the IPC, would dare take lightly. Aventurine is a shrewd merchant, and mm. there's no way he doesn't know that. Uh, perhaps he's going for the family. He's definitely going for the family, and it's just a matter of how. The harmony is strong in Penacony, and almost impossible to take on head to head. Mm. The fact that the IPC dispatched Aventurine shows that they do not intend to simply play by the book here. Perhaps to go for Acheron. <laughs> Aventurine has devoted considerable attention to her. But this Galaxy Ranger... We know hardly anything about her. I can't rush to any conclusions. Uh, perhaps he's going for the Azor Express. Hmm. I was also considering this possibility. Especially... Because he respects you so much. Uh. He has sought you out before a few times. Uh... <laughs> Perhaps he's also unsure of your intentions and is probing you. I don't think respect is the right word. I don't think he respects me at all. <laughs> respect is not the feeling I get when I talk to him. <laughs> no, thank you, sir. Uh, no conclusions can be drawn just yet. I'm just speculating. In any case, we have to be careful when handling Aventurine. He's skilled at reading people and discerning the right moment to strike. Also... He's clearly a born gambler if he's willing to go all in to win. I mean, why do you think he uses chips in his freaking kit? Of course he's a born gambler. Okay, what about you, Welt? Raman. <laughs> Aventurine said something that concerns me. He accused that Galaxy Ranger of killing Robin without any evidence whatsoever. Hmm. But said nothing about her connection to that memory zone meme or why he was stalking you. True. Also, yeah, how are you connected? That's what I'm trying to figure out. It was a groundless accusation, which only serves to make him seem more suspicious. Yeah, huh? Why, though? Does Aventurine have other plans? He's bluffing. Maybe Aventurine's goal was never to gain our trust. Maybe he wanted to foster a feeling of enmity towards Acheron and make the situation more volatile. 
Maybe. Two birds, one stone. However, I asked Don Hung back on the Express to confirm that story about the Annihilation Gang and the lost messages. It wasn't something that Aventurine made up out of thin air. Right, so he's just full on dead. You've met her many times now. What's your impression of Miss Acheron? Hmm. She's a very gentle woman. She's a very mysterious woman. She's a very powerful woman. Weird, I can't seem to remember. She's a very mysterious woman. Weird, I can't seem to remember. That fits the stereotype of a galaxy ranger to a T. Huh. Yeah, acheron has got to have some sort of memory-altering shit or something. Or some sort of, like, spirit whisper to make us shut up or something. They're eccentric, unpredictable, and fond of being alone. No wonder she's a suspect. Hmm. And what about you, March? What do you have? Any inputs from you? Oh, staring off in the sunset, I, I see. I hope it's not too soon to bring it up. But I feel like Miss Robin isn't actually dead, but that she's still alive and well. Hmm. Somewhere. But everything's just some horrible prank. March, well, I have some good news for you. She's coming up in 2.2, so you can pull for her. <laughs> that doesn't mean she's alive, though. Because aren't we supposed to be inside a dream? How could someone die in a beautiful dreamscape like this shouldn't only good things happen here mm. whenever i see the grand theater i just can't stop all these thoughts from flooding my head do you think the family's all behind us we'll, we'll restore all the dreams back to normal hmm no no after all they've brought everyone this sleepy dreamscape which everyone loves. I just feel like I'm starting to understand them less and less. Right. Everyone's still having a great time out there on the streets. Nobody knows what's happened. It's all so unreal. As if Firefly, Miss Robin, and us were all outsiders from another world. Aw, what a mess. I really want a nice cool drink of soda to help me calm down. Well, luckily for you, I have 20,000 bottles of Soul Glad ready and going. Uh, but then I'd be just like everyone else out on the streets. Yeah. Looks like Adventurine doesn't need anything else. Let's turn our attention to the family's assignment for now. Himako, what do you think? Among our current clues, the two murders that she witnessed are the most directly connected. I suggest starting here. Mm. One thing I'm curious about is, if a person dies in a dream, what happens to right, them that. in real life? Thank you, Emiko. Seeing as we're at the family's behest, why not pop back out to reality and verify Miss Firefly's situation back at the hotel? Perhaps we could also make a few inquiries about her while out there. How about we split off into two groups? There are still some things worth focusing on inside the dreamscape. I'll investigate those and we can link up again later. Worth focusing on? Hmm. Oh. No problem. I'll leave it to you then. Uh huh? Aw, I thought I'd finally get to see Himeko and Mr. Yang go out on a mission together. Damn. Oh well. Take care then, Mr. Yang. Wait, uh, I think I missed something. Uh, no, yeah, we're spilling up. Yeah. <laughs> well, out we go, I guess. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> I will. Keep in touch. Hmm. Hmm. What are your thoughts, Welt? Honored guest, uh, could you come out what? for a second? Honored guest? Who? Oh, what the fuck? You were just watching the whole time? I'd be embarrassed too, getting stared at like that. <laughs> hey, I recognize you. You're right in May. <laughs> Forgive me. Uh, my name is Welt Yang. I'm one of the crew members on the Astral Express. 
I believe you've met my colleagues. Oh, sh yeah, what is she doing here? Why did she just come on a talk? Well, up. Oh, you remember that name, perchance? Is there something about my name? First, don't you want to know my name? I already do, Miss Acheron. Yep. You're a prominent figure in Panacone. What are they saying about me? Some claim that you're the real culprit behind these murders. That the Annihilation Gang's tragic fate at the banquet was a result of your blade. Mm. And that you're now attempting to unleash another bloodbath on Panacone. The Annihilation Gang? <laughs> yeah, the fucking... <laughs> Do, you need, do I need to remind you again? Ifrit of Everflame Mansion. Who? Tragic fate. That duke turned his dying body to flames and sacrificed his life as a martyr. He was a determined and heroic path strider. Not even a villain should be disparaged like this. Heroic? Interesting. And what's more, there were plenty of suspects invited. Do they really think that a blade is more dangerous than that? black hole you're wielding. Oh, she's aware. Oh. Keen intuition. Not even the family managed to point out the truth behind this cane. Oh. So you must surely know, Miss Acheron, that peering into a black hole is not a wise move. As a potential threat, your knowledge of us has reached uncomfortable depths. Reveal your true identity and intentions. Otherwise, brace yourself for a gravitational <laughs> disintegration. Prepare to fucking disintegrate in a black hole. Oh my god, well, it's fu I fucking love you. I wish I had you. That shouldn't be necessary. But if it makes the nameless feel less defensive, I'll be happy to abide. Believe it or not, Galaxy Ranger, Acheron, those are the names I go by to this very day. My trip to Panacone is solely to fulfill an old, final request. I'm here for the Watchmaker's legacy. Mm. And that's it. I think I've been honest enough. But I still don't know what that is about. What is the Watchmaker's legacy? Still unwilling to reveal your true identity? Well, too bad. Survive or be destroyed. <laughs> there is no other choice. Goodbye. <laughs> It's not that I don't want to. It's just that I can't. I've come so far, and I can't sum up all of that in just a few words. Everyone has their own unspeakable past. Secrets that they don't want to be revealed. And I won't be asking any more questions, such as why the Astral Express is roaming around the cosmos with a Stellaron on board. Uh, because I can't get rid of it? <laughs> Is she okay? That memo keeper didn't do anything, right? She's fine. Let's just stick with the topic. Gaining my trust depends on how much you're willing to reveal. I've run around many different Panacone dreamscapes just to try and find that legacy. And during this period, I came into contact with quite a few guests. In the process, I gradually came to realize the secret of Panacone may be closely related to the Trailblaze. Mm. That's why I've come to ask for your help. I don't have enough proof yet, but I'd like to speculate something. The source of all tragedy lies within the family. If you could trust me, we could find the proof to support this claim together. Mr. Yang, I think you've come to the same conclusion, haven't you? Let's leave it at that. For now, I'll choose to believe that you bear no hostility. Share your findings with me and me alone. I don't want vague conjecture to interfere with other people's judgments before we find solid proof. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> the fucking sassy way she said that. By the way, would you like something to drink? What? Before we go, how about two cups of wake the heck up? Is that a drink name? No. Four cups. Super on the nose. <laughs> because the conversation coming up will last forever. Oh boy. Oh boy. Wait, I want to see. I want to see this conversation. Wait. Oh well. 
At the same time, Hotel in the Real World. I've been watching her closely for a while now. And the first invitation was in the banquet hall of the hotel. Hmm, that might be the best scene so far and we just started. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, both of them are from the Honkai universe, right? Raiden Mei and Welt. <laughs> I'm surprised Welt didn't like make a comment on saying like, "Hey, you look familiar." <laughs> then again, maybe maybe Welt's just so used to all the XPs around, um, yeah, from his world that he just doesn't acknowledge him anymore. She just sat in one corner, keeping silent, chugging down a couple cups of wake the heck up. What? I told her it's a pungent, bitter beverage, not the taste of sweet dreams. Fuck. Only for people allergic to Soul Glad. And she said... Huh? Oh, oh no, she's talking about Akron. Really? But I don't taste any difference at all between them. Oh. The guest rooms are charmingly minimalist. An aesthetic you share, Miss Acheron. Yep. It's a cinch. This music box. The invitation received by the Annihilation Gang. Oh. There are latent memories that linger on it yet. You see, memories of you are not yours alone. They travel in other people, other things. I know much, and I can predict even more. With some help, the dead can be made to speak. Hmm. The Annihilation Gang... That band of desperados who all disappeared after meeting you. What exactly happened to them? Well, let me reveal all. <laughs> I just like to think she's just like monologuing to herself. There's nobody in the room with her. She's just monologuing to herself. <laughs> or to us. What are these memories? Gradation 12. Oh. Dreamscape 12. Wait. Father, I dedicate this to you. That sounds like the puppet girl. Well done, Dubra. And that's Duke, well, Inferno. Shall be met by the hmm. There it is. It's hazy, but it's Ifrit's voice. The other one is probably his progeny. This is the residual memory from when the invitation was first delivered. They were abruptly interrupted. Then, what happened next is... Wow. Wow. Go. This marks your right of passage. She won't be necessary. I alone am enough. Shh. Is that Katarina? I was trying to make out the voice. It sounded like her. Fear death. Yeah, this sounds like these sound like the same lines from the Annihilation Gang trailer. The Everflame Mansion has set out on a journey. Those poor people. They have no idea what lies in wait ahead of them. Memory recovery is going well, but slowly. She'll be here soon, and time is short. There's nobody else here, so there's no need to be delicate. In fact, I think I'd better go all out. Why do you do that from the very beginning, then? <laughs> uh. What happened? Uh. What? Something blocking the memory? The memory after that is blank. Huh. How is that possible? This music box fell into Acheron's hands and she brought it to Panacone. That's a fact. And that's how it should have gone. But along the way... Nothing? How? Hmm. It's like it's been erased. Who's done this? Could it be a, another memo keeper? Or does somebody just have the ability to just fucking do that? Nope, fucked on nothing. Who are you? Uh oh. Who are you? What? It's. Uh. It's. 
Is this not a memory? Oh, a memo keeper. Oh. Do you serve the Garden of Recollection? Or the Cremators? The Cremators? The fuck? My name is Constance. Oh. A pleasure to meet you. We were supposed to meet at Pentagoni and spend an <laughs> unforgettable time together. Constance, that's the Lady Demetrius cut looking girl from the Annihilation Gang, right? She's a memo keeper? But that seems unrealistic. Oh, shit. Dog is not welcome on the banquet store, and I don't need a coming of age ceremony. And you want her secret? I can give it to you, and then you can enjoy the banquet for me. Oh, shit. <laughs> I wish you unforgettable memories. Oh. <laughs> oh. Also, why it's a phone shaped like that? That's creepy looking. A phone. Wanna listen in? At this moment, on the other side. What the? Oh, switching to Aventurine's POV. Okay. Okay. Switching to his side now. Oh, yeah, they did say they were going to be, like, costly switching perspectives throughout the story. So, hey. A few days ago, the IPC made an announcement. Under the watchful guidance of the Marketing Development Department and in accordance with the Interstellar Peace Charter, the independent Sigonian sovereignty has hereby been established and shall take a legislative seat at the Interstellar Congress. Hmm. The formation of the Sigonian sovereignty is of great historical significance to the Sigonia system. This move puts an end to the planet's long and bloody history, turning the sensational Kataka Abjin extinction event into a distant memory. Extinction events. Sigonia 4 is located in an unclaimed zone at the intersection of the Denise, Pruthian, and Dorno star clusters. The planet's surface environment is known for being extremely harsh, constantly faced with the threat of impact from small scale celestial objects. Jeez, how'd eventually grow up on a place like that? This is why very few intelligent species have made this planet their home. Dividing themselves into several tribes to eke out nomad lifestyles as they struggle to survive the arid desert wilderness. Oops, fuck, I, I skipped the part there. My bad. This is why very few intelligent species have made this planet their home. Dividing themselves into several tribes to eke out nomad lifestyles as they struggle to survive the arid desert wilderness. They have developed their own folk beliefs that are independent of the Eon belief system. <laughs> Huh. Their own belief systems, okay. Sigonia. Uh. Oh. Oh. Wait. Ravenous eye of the storm, spurned by all the gods. Is it? Is that little baby Aventurine? Land of rock, but not water. Lightning, but not rain. Blood. Not what is this chant? <laughs> you beat us with your falling stars. You lash us with wind and storm. You chew us up with the cracked earth. You promised us a land of honey, yet yoked us beneath a sword of bitterness. Oh, Gyathra Triclops. If thou can hear me, please open up thy three eyes and gaze upon this child. Gyathra Triclops, aka Feng Bios. I'm not sure who that is. When you took his father, my child was still sleeping in my belly. And where my husband went, I too soon must go. I don't ask for a peaceful death. Just for you to tell me. Does the baby swaddled sweetly asleep? Does he dream of his mother's heartbeat and the sound of falling rain? 
please tell me whether this life is all just a fleeting dream. Jeez, the fucking voice performance right now, though. Holy shit. <laughs> This child be born to face impending death. Mommy! 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 The rain! It's raining! Oh, wait, what? Is it, is it Baby Venturing himself, or... Does he have siblings? Raining? <sighs> raining! <laughs> Then Nubilla turns out I know her. Oh, sorry. I'm just feeling a bit depressed. I hit my... I stopped my toe on the table the other day. <laughs> it is raining. It's true. Those outworlders weren't lying to us. They really did summon the rain. Oh. Mommy, we can leave here. We can go back home. Back home. <laughs> wow. You came. <laughs> Do you hear that? <gasps> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Darling, listen. This is the sound of rain. <laughs> On the day you were born. The sky also sent down a gift like this from Gayathra. <laughs> Such a lucky child. Such a blessed child. Aww. Just like your name. A gift from them to Avgen. <gasps> My boy. God, the voice performance is fucking... <laughs> Killing it right now, it's so so good. Also, yeah, yeah, Outworlders. What Outworlders? Us? The Stellan the the Stellan Hunters. The Astro Express? Or some other Outworlders? Hmm. May the goddess Gayathra close her eyes three times. Keep your blood eternally pulsing. Let your journey be forever peaceful and your schemes forever concealed. <laughs> Welcome to this sad world, Kakavasha. Kakavasha? Is that Avengerine's true name? I'm assuming that's him and not some random kid. Or something. Uh. Time to wake up, gambler. Hey, is that my boy Ratio? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, heavens. <laughs> I must have drunk too much Soul Glad. I didn't expect you to be back so soon. How is it? Find anything? Just as you guess. Yep. <laughs> Nobody outside knows about Robin's death. There aren't even baseless conspiracy theories. They are still streaming the rehearsal for her ceremony. Huh. <laughs> using a stand-in, I guess. <laughs> they must be dreaming. Of course. <laughs> Who could imagine that death would actually descend upon the idyllic dream created by the family? Hmm. Let alone that the victim would be the female lead of the Charmony Festival. To be honest with you, I didn't believe it. I even tested it a few times myself until I discovered that I couldn't actually die. What? <laughs> uh, Whenever huh? there's any danger, I'm forced awake by the dream pool, and it's all as if everything were just a nightmare. Adventurine, are you okay? That means, that means he tried to kill himself in the dream, didn't he? Jeez. Even tested it myself a few times? Christ. <laughs> that's why I'm convinced that there are a few big secrets lurking behind the scenes. Then you must have heard about the Memory Zone meme. Mm. When I graciously deigned to establish connections with the Oak family on your behalf, they were quite in a pitiful state of disarray. Besides Robin, there was another body. Yeah. I don't know the exact details, just that it was 
a stowaway. Okay, now they're gonna learn about Firefly. Two murder cases? <laughs> I told you something seemed off about the nameless. Oh, she must have come across the other one. <laughs> this murderer is a psycho. But I have to admit, the case should be easy to crack. We can leverage the family's malfeasance and let the IPC use this as a reason to intervene. It's just that their trickery runs deeper than I thought. Robin Stannon was all ready to go. Mm. <sighs> These two murders are definitely getting hushed up. Uh, what should we do? Let me think. It's too rare an opportunity to miss out on, so... I gotta be careful. Incredible gambler. <laughs> Have you already exhausted your limited repertoire of tricks so soon? Oh, there are plenty of chips, but it'd be best to choose carefully. The most straightforward has to be Robin. Mm. Remember? That masked fool once told me to find a mute as a friend. <laughs> and where is this masked fool now, by the way? Robin is what she calls the mute. She has lost her voice, and while most people can't pick up on it, you and I cannot mistake that sound. Hmm. Not produced by any voice box, but rather by the resonance of the harmony. She's lost- wait, Robin's lost her voice? What? Huh. If that girl hadn't gone hoarse from singing practice, there'd only be one possibility. Something was up with the family. Or Robin herself. To get to the bottom of this, I tried every way I could to meet her, but she died right before my very eyes. A complete and utter loss. Incidentally, it seems to have resulted in your rather undignified arrival on the interrogation stand. There were eyewitnesses at the scene, and the family, in their graciousness, has tentatively accepted your alibi. However, for the foreseeable future, you shall, regrettably, find yourself under the vigilant watch of the Hounds. Of the Hounds. Hmm. Remember that weird sound when we arrived at Panicani? That was from her. Oh, hmm. Well, things aren't looking too optimistic, Doctor. I'm starting to break out in a cold sweat. D do you reckon... There's still any chance of a comeback, given how things are. <laughs> Never heard of entry starring before. Hmm. A probability. Yes, it exists, but it verges on the infinitesimal. To phrase it in a manner more befitting the vernacular of Panacone, you're dreaming. Hmm. But if you simply can't control yourself and want to try your hand, then there just so happens to be a suitable candidate. That man wants to see you again. That man? Who? Oh. Sunday. Ooh. <sighs> Is this a public hearing or a private trial? If it were the former, it would hardly befit my stature to stoop to the role of a mere messenger. <laughs> <sighs> Fine. <laughs> oh, that's great. It's all great. You see, the dead can't talk, but the living can. Ratio, I'm convinced now that there must be something wrong inside the family. Oh, <laughs> just you wait and see. That man's sister has died. He can't sit on his hands. Well, without any further ado, let's set off. Oh boy. <laughs> Lead the way. The show is about to begin. Okay, well, things are definitely gonna go well. The Dewlight Pavilion is the Oak family's fortress and a place where heads of the families meet to discuss great plans for Panacone. A fortress? <laughs> oh, I like this metaphor. I dealt with the warlords of the Amanica star system not long ago, and their synchronized orbital manner wasn't this heavily guarded. This mansion nominally belongs to Sunday and is very befitting of its owner. Without his express invitation, the likes of ordinary guests would never grace these grounds in their lifetimes. Mm. Look around while you still have this moment of freedom. Hey, Doc, whose side are you on anyway? Who's to say I won't sell you out? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. 
When we meet the authoritarian master of the Oak family, I'll pry an answer out of him. Yeah, geez, thank, thanks, game, for clarifying the master is Sunday, even though I didn't know already. <laughs> Follow me, and I'll bring you to his parlor. Hold your tongue, and let me deal with the members of the family. Hey, as the story unfolds, you will have the chance to progress the story from other characters' POV. When entering a character's POV for the first time, that character will automatically be placed first in your team. Sweet, so I get the trial of rain? Nice. You can check the Fate Atlas interface to see which character's POV an ongoing mission or complete mission is in. If you need to change your POV to continue the story, you can select here to enter Fate Assemble. For more details, please see tutorials. Oh. Okay, so Adventurines or the Trailblazer's perspective. Okay, so I can switch back to me if I so want to. Mm. Let me check Fate Atlas to see what paths there are. Cat among pigeons. Okay, so there's Adventurine side and the Trailblazer side. So you can choose, which is kind of nice actually i like the option of choice but yeah since the story is putting me in adventuring shoes i'm going to see things from his side first things first also i do want to try him out oh yeah look at this fucking attack <laughs> dropping fucking chips and dice how fitting okay you want know since he's here yeah, let me take a quick setup here. Sure. <laughs> yeah, this team definitely will get along well together. <laughs> and then what's his, uh... Feeling lucky. Oh, that's a technique. Feeling lucky. <laughs> yes, triple sevens. Also money. Can we see the kit? Uh, I'm pretty sure we know mostly about the kit. Oh, wait, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> can view detailed info. Well, I guess I can see his kit then. <laughs> Unless I'm in battle or something. All right, I kind of wish he had his like top hat on, but eh, oh well. <laughs> okay, Hendrik, I'm ready for my trial. Also, let me just get this tutorial out of the way. Give me that one stellar jade. Hell yeah, let's fucking go. <laughs> okay. Hey, you two. That's a place of business. No entry. Uh, we're here for business. I was requested by Mr. Sunday to bring him the suspect. <laughs> My name is Ratio. <laughs> he should have mentioned it to you. My name is Ratio, and then the fucking... Imagine the guard, the fucking bouncer just starts fucking giggling. Just see? <laughs> really? Ratio? Really now? L plus Ratio? <laughs> oh, I remember you. Veritas Ratio. Your punch virtual particle clock is impressive. Punch vertical virtual particle clock. That's a mouthful. Excuse me. Uh. uh, the one on your head. Of course, it's nothing compared to mine. Oh, oh. Clock, <laughs> the fucking plaster heads. Of the mobile knights. Right, and as I mentioned, that fantasy raiment of yours doesn't exist. That's because you can't see it. <laughs> like I say, only family can see the glory of the mobile knights. Ugh, enough. Get going. Don't keep Mr. Sunday waiting. <sighs> it seems like the idiocy <laughs> here is no better than it is out there. God damn it. The people here are still fucking stupid. God freaking darn. <laughs> okay, well, let me in. Hang on, I'm on the chest. End. The door is shut tight. Looks like we're on our own. I mean, there isn't a door. How did you get in before? For security reasons. Oh. The family built the administrative site deep in the dreamscape. What? <laughs> okay. The mechanisms hidden in these Nightingale statues. The direction of the statues can be controlled. You need to do a puzzle in order to get access. <laughs> On the Tedious, I know. Occasion, an attendant named Kona had gone to the side room to verify something before setting the statues in the correct positions. Well, maybe we should do the same. Let's go and take a look. Of course, we can also use yeah. force. <laughs> of course, we can also blast through the fucking wall and just get in there right away. But they'd probably be more mad at me and charge you more crimes. 
Oh well, first things first though, bunny. Also, yeah, I'll get rid of these fucking balloons staring at the wall. Screw them. Okay, uh... I guess they're... Okay, I need to see how they are formed first. Oh, I thought this TV would do something. That's a small-ass TV, I gotta say. Yeah, that's uh, keeping my eye out for birds as well. Considering they can pop up here. Yep. Oh, we're gonna have to run on the walls again, don't we? Uh, yep. Ooh, not chest. Okay, how many chests are in this area? 27, jeez, okay. Yeah, I think at some point I'm gonna have to come here as a trailblazer. Oh, for sure. Well, let's begin wall running. Ratio, let's go. Alright. Oh, we can actually do combat with him. <laughs> oh, you guys are new? Alright, let's get into combat with Venturine. Oh, what the fuck? What? You guys can mimic my previous enemies? <laughs> what the shit? Okay. Let's uh, have a Venturine go first and see <laughs> what he can do. Okay, defense. <laughs> Don't ask, just spend. <laughs> Here you go, money. Let Defend yourself. <laughs> <begin. laughs> I'm okay. Constantly. All right, yeah, he gets stacked as well for like yeah, every time the shields hit. Did that hurt? Yeah. Uh, who's next? <laughs> eh, I'll have uh, Sparkles do that. Sure, I'll play along. Oh okay, yeah, Ratio like doesn't have his artifacts right now, so he's gonna be a bit weaker than usual. Okay, then what's his uh, basic attack? Your answers? Oh, he just throws a dice. As expected. <laughs> me. Zero points. Boom. Oh. oh yeah, look at that! Holy mother of fall attacks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, so can I check his kit? I can, but not a slight cone. Okay. Uh, provides all allies with a fortified wager shield, whose shield effect is stackable. And then... Interesting. It's not giving me like a detailed list of his... Yeah, it's just giving me like the basics of his kid. Okay. Gains a random blind bet points and... Inflicts a nerf on a single enemy, dealing imaginary damage when an allies hit with an un... When an ally hits an unnerved enemy, the crit damage dealt increases. Hmm. And then for error... Oh, wait, this is a... Oh, okay, yeah, this is follow-up attack. For any ally with fortified wager, their effect res increases when they get attacked. Aventurine accumulates blind bet. When Aventurine has fortified wager, he can resist crowd control debuffs. Upon reaching seven points of blind bet, Aventurine consumes the seven points to launch a follow-up attack, dealing minor damage uh, to imaginary anim uh, imaginary damage to random single enemy targets, bouncing a total of seven times. Okay. Cool. Uh, and then his technique. Using the technique randomly grants one out of three defense boost effects, but with different buff values. After entering the next battle, increases all allies' defense by the corresponding value. Okay. Cool. Ah, but it also goes over every time a fall of attack is triggered. What the monkey? Let's what are you doing here? God damn it. Okay. Uh, let me read that again. Okay, so. Hmm. So you get the blind bet by getting attacked or by doing fall of attacks? That might be one of his major traces, actually. Maybe, maybe that is the case. Can you find the answer? Yeah, let's see here, actually. Let's have a... Uh... Yeah, Dr. Ratio go now. Oh yeah, just break them entirely. Uh, okay. Then... Okay, so no, it doesn't go up with uh... Oh no, it's only when attacking the enemies with the debuff, I think. <laughs> Yeah, let's try and get Aventry's ultimate here. Spend freely. Damn, okay, his ultimate <laughs> takes a long time. Got your head. Ah, but there we go. Okay, okay, the top hat comes in when he, uh... Right, when he does a follow-up attack. Ah, shoot. 
Okay, we'll, we'll test out Ventry's ultimate next battle. That's uh, that was really really good though. What about the details in terms of numbers? See, that's a weird thing. It doesn't specify the numbers of his like kit. I can I can only see like the brief description. Feeling lucky. I was thinking they're gonna keep it that way until Ventry's like actually out. Maybe. There's our picture. Six nightingales facing in different directions. An obvious hint. Okay. All face in different directions. Okay. Mm. But are these nightingales? They are. What's wrong? How can nightingales be so huge? Oh, come on. They look more like torment eagles to me. Don't sweat the details. There are no eagles in the five families, only nightingales. <sighs> Why am I wasting time with you on this? <laughs> why, did, why did I come with you here to do this damn puzzle? And also, why are there enemies here? Did you return on the path they came from? Oh, okay, just TP me right back. Okay. Um, do I have to arrange them in that specific order, or do I just have to move them? Hmm. Okay. Turn you clockwise. Okay, so I wonder. You could have turned these before you went in. I wonder what happens if you like solve the puzzle on accident. <laughs> would there be like bonus dialogue or something? If there was, that would be hilarious. Ta-da! Just as I thought. Here's the correct answer. A truly miraculous discovery. Perhaps <laughs> I should offer you the chance to join the Genius Society. <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought you'd given up on that already. I was clearly fucking joking, you numbskull. I was being sarcastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't you tell? Yeah, I fucking hate you. Why do I hang out with you? Why are we in that light cone together? I I don't I don't even know. <laughs> yep. Oh, more puzzle shit. Oh, impressive. <laughs> so much for Mr. Sunday's reserved, virtuous image. Do you need me to remind you? <laughs> We're in a dreamscape. No matter how grand the mansion looks, it'll not affect Penacony. Stop wasting your time nitpicking the family here. Yeah, you're right. The only way to destroy the family is death. <laughs> Sunday must have thought the same. Let's head down. How do we get down? Also, why are there enemies still here? Ah, uh, whatever. Oh, of course, this fallen statue is blocking my way to that chest. Uh, freaking course, I gotta go all the way around. Well, I'm not complaining. What's here, though? Ah, damn it, I can't open this door. Uh, can I go this way? Oh, I can. Hang on. <laughs> Dr. Ratio, we're gonna go take a detour. Ah, shit, I'm not supposed to be here. Oh, God. <laughs> eh, sorry. Dr. Rachel's just like fuming. Why do you keep getting yourselves into this stupid shit? Well, uh, first things first, let's explore for a bit. No harm in that. Oh, what is this place? <laughs> Don't mind us, Ratio. Let's, uh, let's go around for a bit, you know? Alright, but now let's get back into the media things. Okay, gamble. Okay, hearts. That is still 36%. So I wonder if this. Is there any chance you can get lower than that? Or is it like there's a middle ground with that uh, thing? Also, what a terrible fucking artifact. <laughs> Good lord. I don't even want to look at that. Ew. Ew. Get that trash relic out of my sight. <laughs> okay. Ooh, what the heck is this? What is this? Can I can I grab it? Why can't I grab it? Why can't I do anything with it? Oh, do I have to come back here as a trailblazer? Maybe maybe yeah, maybe a venturing can't interact with it. Maybe I gotta come back here another time with, uh... Yeah, the gang. Uh, I guess I better keep this place in mind for when I come back as, a, uh, As myself. <laughs> Alright, but... <laughs> moment of truth. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Why did we go on that entire journey to get all those chests? And we didn't even go the right direction. Come on now. <laughs> huh? What's wrong? Are we heading the wrong way? No. But this door is locked. Oh. My friend, did you really make an appointment with him? It's a trial. 
You got to prove your worth to Sunday before <laughs> you can speak with him. Why is it so fucking convoluted? If I'm not wrong, we need to find a way to open this door in the hall or this place will be our prison. What the? Why can't we just have a normal meeting? Oh, an escape room. <laughs> My favorite. Get serious. I've no time for games. Let's head back. The hint is probably in that prominent sandpit. Sandpit? <laughs> wow. Oh, that one. Now that's an enormous sandpit. I'd love to build a tall building for myself. Once I have enough savings. <laughs> okay, now I can look at it. Damn, that's a sandpit? Jeez. Oh, look. There's a noticeable gap in the model. Oh. I believe you're right. There wasn't a gap before. That man must have done it intentionally. Well, with your brilliant mind, you shouldn't have any trouble recalling what was here last time. Right, Doctor? Oh, this is where I get that thing. <laughs> of course. That thing I saw is the key. Uh, so I had to go through there. Okay. <laughs> Let's look around. When I see it, I will know it. Yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> Fine. I got you. Fine. Why do I feel that we're pursuing a degree <laughs> burglary? Uh, classic me doing things ahead when I'm not supposed to do them. Yeah, that's the key. That's why I couldn't grab it at, at all, because I needed to wait for the story to let me get it. This is it. Hey, look at that. Let's go get it right away. I know how to get there. Okay, so that was story related. I thought it was like a trailblazer thing, but no. This was mandatory for the story. Give me that. The nameplate reads Gulliver's Arch. <laughs> well, I'm amazed you can remember something this tiny. You know, this reminds me of a tunnel I once saw that could shrink people who passed through it. If I were you, I would shut my mouth. <laughs> it's wise to remain silent when you should. So you return to the lobby. Oh, well, thank God I don't have to walk all the way back. <laughs> There we go. Okay, put that in and uh, drawers unlocks. Sweet. Insert the uh, Gulliver's Arch into the oh, slide. This reminds me of one of those building toys. You know, with the blocks. <laughs> I've never played with them before. I wonder if it's more interesting than stacking chips. <laughs> Would you please shut the fuck up, Aventurine? Oh, look. <laughs> Just... The gap is closed. Yep. And it fits perfectly. So, what's next? I mean, the door should be open, right? Oh, enter the s Oh, do I- I go in? Blue skadoo, here we too. <laughs> oh, I'm tiny? Hey! <laughs> hey, Dr. Ratio, can you see me? Can you see me? Oh my god, you're even more annoying when you're small. <laughs> oh, good heavens. Did I drink? <laughs> Am I still in a dream? Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. You know, maybe I could just flip this whole thing over and kill you right now. Oh, Doctor, you're huge. <laughs> it's me! Down here! In the, the sand pit! Hey, do you see me? Hello? Oh, actually, I think we could make this work for us. <laughs> just find a way to slip me into Sunday's collar, and I'll infiltrate the family just like that. Yes, somehow I don't think that's gonna work. <sighs> oh, fine. I was just kidding. <laughs> Let's find a way to open the door. Whoa. The dreaming town to an oak paradise. Lady, are you okay? You're like walking to a wall. Oh, no, you're, you're sir. Mister, are you okay? Sir? Sir? Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> what? Why is that the first thing I see when I load into this place? Hey, it's like we're back on Panicon. Uh, oh, wow. Holy mother, Dr. Ratios. Hang on. This is time for a photo mode. Hang on. All right, there we go. <laughs> yeah, look at that. <laughs> hey, look, guys. It's little me and big me. <laughs> I got to take a picture of this, actually. All right. Hey, big me. Smile for the camera. Actually, uh, who cares? We know we both know you don't smile. 
<laughs> okay, but man, do you see the shit I have to deal with? <laughs> That's perfect, actually. Let's put that on. Also, I noticed that Venturine and Dr. Rachel have like lines for each other when they join the party. So let me just hear them real quick. Keep to yourself, gambler, and spare me the false display of concern. <laughs> okay. Uh, I can't remove him. I can't remove uh, Aventurine, so won't know what he says if uh, Ratio joins. <laughs> this is funny, though. <laughs> I'm tiny. Hello. Oh my god, this is like a one-to-one -one recreation of the... What the fuck? Is this place intentionally bugged? Because look, those three men are just... What the... They're... These guys are T-posing. What? Huh? Okay, something's clearly wrong with this place. Okay, this is intentional. I thought that was a bug. <laughs> Why is everybody t posing? <laughs> what is wrong with this place? Hello, mister? You're walking to stairs. <laughs> oh my. Hello, mister? You're halfway into the sewer. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, the family's gotta add in that new patch update, man. The game's like literally unplayable. <laughs> Look at these two fucking T-posing with each other. <laughs> you guys uh, doing okay? Also, there's enemies back here. Yeah, sure, let's go killing. <laughs> what the heck is wrong with this place? So, okay, the bugs are intentional, I think. I don't think this is a, like, unfinished game development. I think this is actually intentional. Yeah, look at these guys just fucking in a conga line over this guy's dead body. There's another guy, dead guy. Holy shit. Feeling lucky. <laughs> I want to see what more is wrong with this place. Okay, I guess I gotta yeah, go this way. <laughs> Hi, T-Pos. I am an Oak family soldier. <laughs> also, a shit ton of money here as well. Nice. <laughs> you enjoying the scenery together, buddy? Oh man, I'm I'm so enjoying your scenery right now. Yo, hi, Ratio. <laughs> see, you're still there, I see. Holy shit, there's a dead guy. <laughs> right next to the fire hydrant. Also, everybody looks the same as well. That's what I noticed. <laughs> hi, sir. <laughs> Hello, I am an NPC. <laughs> this place is fucking hilarious, I tell you. Hoya's got some really good humor with this fucking game. Okay, let's actually <laughs> get out of here now. Oh, goddammit, of course. Oh, I gotta approach Tipo's man in order to get out of here. Uh, hi, mister. Hello. Welcome <laughs> to the Golden Hour base model. <laughs> I am an Oak soldier. I will be here to guide you through the tour of the base model. Happy to be of service. You know, part of me wonders if, like... Because, like, Hoyer just couldn't be bothered to animate the NPCs in here and decided, yeah, let's just keep them being Tipo's. Sure, that'll make the players laugh. And yeah, it is. It's working. <laughs> it's really working. <laughs> uh, tell me about the guided tour. Hmm. And tell me about the tour. Hello. Welcome to the Golden Hour Base model. Base. <laughs> I am an Oak soldier. I will be here to guide you through the tour <laughs> of the base model. Yeah, these guys are broken. Hey, I'm talking to you. Tell me about the tour. Give it a kick. <laughs> Happy to be of service. Gen aiding guide. Please wait patient. <laughs> oh god, he's gonna explode. Uh you're seriously the worst soldier. Tell me about the tour. Kick it again. Found the nearest check-in spot. Please look behind me. A capsule ma a a a a a sheen model. Model uh 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 he's lost it. After screaming the soldier collapses, he didn't have time to earn a five star rating from you. <laughs> What's up with that? Now oh, the family's and he's dead. Are trying to frame me? I didn't do a thing to it, Doc. You've gotta be my witness. <laughs> I saw nothing. Damn. <laughs> it, it crashed. It makes hate some time to reboot. Uh, I can already tell Hoy had fun making this place. You can tell they had they had a blast designing this part of the game. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, capsule machine. <laughs> There's no mechanism on the floor. Could there be one at the top? Doctor! Do me a favor. Up. Uh, whoa! Cool. <laughs> Thank <So>? you. <laughs> I was right. These models have interiors that look exactly like the real buildings. The only difference is that no one lives in them. Funny that Sunday puts a miniature that makes him seem like a giant by comparison. Mm. Where he can see it first thing in the morning. <laughs> Insecure much? <laughs> Maybe. Also, damn. <laughs> Still catches me off guard the giant fucking ratio there. <laughs> okay, give me my goddamn jigsaw puzzle. There we go. Okay, other ones, other ones. Okay, one more over there. Hello, sir, walking into the stairs. Hello, sir, T-posing in the sewers. <laughs> Hello, sirs, T-posing together. <laughs> okay, there it is. Gotta fight some enemies, which I've already killed. Oh, one of the there we go. Flew upstairs. Oh. oh okay, I knew that was the third one. Flick myself up there. But it's tough. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, clearly this place needs some maintenance. <laughs> uh, upsy daisy. <laughs> oh. Oh, great. There's another pinball machine base here. And it's empty, too. Doc! I'll need your brain power again. There's no need to yell. <laughs> I can hear you. The pinball machine must be hidden somewhere in the hall, like the arch. Wait here, and I'll be back in a minute. In a minute, or maybe I'll just leave you here to die. <sighs> Find <laughs> a moment of peace. Can I actually see a veteran down there? If I zoom, if I squint my eyes real hard, can I actually see him? I want to. I want to look for him. Doctor, shake a leg. <laughs> Hang on. Neither one of us is going anywhere. Also, I see that there. There's a bird hiding in the freaking thing itself. Dipped. Can I pull you out? No, I have to do it. It's a venturine, I think. Huh. <laughs> Quite a fascinating contraption. <laughs> I would rate it more favorably if that clamorous little person inside were gone. Uh, ratio. I can hear you. <laughs> I know you can. I want you to hear this. Okay, do I no longer have a? Uh... No, I don't have adventure anymore. Okay, well, I'm fine with having Doctor Ratio on my side anyway. He's good with deep offs anyhow. Okay, also here where I've already explored. Right. <laughs> ah, okay, there we go. Give me. That's it. Pleasant moments of solitude are always fleeting. Also, I'm surprised to give you a child doctor ratio when he's still like free. Cause yeah, you can still claim him for free as of right now. He's like yeah, his uh free claim duration has been extended to two point one. <laughs> So yeah, if you haven't claimed Dr. Ratio yet, go and do that right now. Because <laughs> in 2.2, I think he's gone. I think you can no longer get him after 2.2 for free. All right, I'm back, regrettably. Oh, you're back. Just place it here. Thank you. Place the mod on the sand pit. Walk away and be an ass. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> uh, back to Ventrine. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> I see these fucks are so <laughs> so bug as always. All right, let's go. Uh, okay. Activate you. Uh. Okay, and then I just activate you. Rotates. Activates. Rotate. Hmm. Oh, you two, and then oh, I'm going to turn all of you on. Then rotate and yes. Yippee. 
Also, this is the building where like the giant feathers are at, right? Yeah, I, I think so. Oh, Ratio, you should come in here and take a look. <laughs> the view here is breathtaking. Honestly, you can really squash me with just pinch. Oh, there's one of the birds. If that is your wish, I will do so <laughs> without a moment's hesitation. Jeez. Real toxic relationship these two have. <laughs> Get out of there, birdie. Aventurine, stop playing with the goddamn birds. <laughs> we got a mission to fulfill. <laughs> God, okay. Uh, I think this calls for another screenshot. Don't you guys think? Yeah, another screenshot, Tom. Okay, let's bring out the photo mode. Upsy daisy. Ooh, a bit higher, a bit higher. <laughs> Hey, it's me and the homeboy, the giant homeboy. Uh, can actually, um... <laughs> Angry Aventurine. <laughs> Smiling Aventurine. <laughs> Disapproving Aventurine. <laughs> oh, Aventurine. <laughs> this is perfect. Oh my god, I fucking hate this guy. I, I fucking hate this guy. You know that? This guy fucking sucks. <laughs> yes. Give me give that to me. I'll gladly take that. Also, um Yeah, high game logo. I don't want that to be there. And that too. Yeah. <laughs> that is fucking gold. <laughs> okay, I'm done taking photos now. Let's go actually uh do what we were meant to do. There we are. Also, hey, open the door to the other side. Money as well. Oh, I didn't even see this guy up here. Hi. <laughs> you enjoying the uh, the view there, buddy? You enjoying the view? <laughs> nah, this place is fucking great, I tell ya. Hold on. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. <laughs> Alright. Oh. Oh, now I gotta go here. Okay. Three energy. Okay. Hmm. Rotate. Uh. Oh. Right. Oh. Yay. Okay. I'm not sure why I'm going over here, but... I might as well check. Also, yeah, I see that balloon just floating off there. Oh. Oh, dinosaur. Oh, okay. Need to prepare for this. Feeling lucky. Okay, that's still the 36% one, right? You. Oh. Wait, can I not check? Hello? Really? I, I, I can't see? My own buffs? Huh, weird. Oh, we know Aventurine. There we go. Defense, yeah, that's yeah, just the, the only one. Okay, let's do this dinosaur. Oh, hey, is this a different battle OC? Dirty tricks Ow! Don't hit all of us. The market is unpredictable. Right! Investing in victory means playing the bomb game! Uh, yep, there we go. Perhaps you humanity never conceals its desire. Now, this sounds like the same battle OC. Ram. Uh, put that shield back on. What are you looking at? Let's crush you in. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Goodbye, dinosaur. Damn, only one point. You know who I That's am. disappointing. Diamond, it's all yours. Time to twirl. Nice. Yeah. Nice. More. Huh. All, in. all in, baby. Hey, Ow. Watch your head. Hey, once again, we're feeling. Okay, uh, should probably kill some of these guys on the side, <laughs> just so they... Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, no need to refresh. I can just do that. I have something for you. Okay, so you have the same properties as the others. Where it's just like, I need to break you to do damage. All in, baby. Sure, I'll play Uh, this uh -huh. won't break. But it should in a second here. You've got a lot of nerve. 
Well, if you ask for it, you won't get away. break them. The risk the high reward. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it all. Take it all. Hey, there we go. A good seven now. Or I think that was a six, actually. Okay, now we kill this guy here before he gets back up. Time for an overhaul. Bam. Head your bets. Uh, yep. Go on, Numphy. What are you looking at? Do you know who this big diamond? It's all yours. Boom. Time to twirl. Nice. Follow up. Follow up one. Follow up two. Laser beam. Humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. Uh, I probably should, should refresh the shield, huh? Honored to meet me. Ah, damn, he's gonna recover. <laughs> okay, maybe this Himiko team was not the best. Watch your head. Ow. Yeah, now he's like super shielded sure now, and I barely do anything. Spend freely. Let the value. <laughs> You've got a lot Ow. Of I do like that Eventry can overcap though. With Watch like his uh yeah, his stacks. What are you looking The dice have been cast. The dice have been cast. Or maybe I'll take it off. Six oh. points, nice. That's probably like the you best case scenario. Off. Six or seven points. Nice. Get his ass. Sweets, and you're done, son. <laughs> there we are. Okay, it took a bit longer than I like to admit. Piece of cake. Huh. <laughs> okay, eventually, actually, has dialogue for that for some reason. Like I said, the game kind of expects you to go this way. Maybe. All right. Uh, time we head back in that case. Yeah, nowhere else to go from here. All right, let's uh, complete this jigsaw puzzle finally. Okay, you go here, here, and there we go. The joyous tour of Toy City has come to an end. Hmm, makes me feel sad. Oh, there we go. <laughs> now the main door is open. Isn't all, bad, all right. right. I'll use this interesting experience as a talking point at the poker table. Well, goodbye, Glitchland, and uh, hello, Sunday. Let's go on back. Hey, hey, I'm back. Did you miss me? All right, are we ready to go? It's a pity you made it out of the sand pit alive. <laughs> Sunday is just beyond this door. From my limited understanding, he's not someone easily handled. Are you prepared? <laughs> Damn, I kind of hated that you made it out alive. I kind of hope you would die in there somehow. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. Only I believe he's the one who should be prepared to face me. Hmm, but words. Tell me about your plan. I don't have a plan. I'll just play it by ear. There are only two kinds of bargaining chips when dealing with people. Benefit or fear. Looks like sincerity isn't in your dictionary. Am I not sincere enough? No. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need to emphasize it. We've got to make good use of death. That man's sister is dead. He won't be able to turn a blind eye, and that's fear. That's kind of fucked up. And I'll help him find the murderer. He can't do it due to his status and position, but I can. And that's benefit. On what basis do you believe he's incapable, necessitating the delegation to someone from a rival faction? the IPC. Simple. Because that murderer could very well be a traitor hiding inside the family. Oh? <laughs> um, do you mean the Galaxy Ranger whom you accused previously? <laughs> that was just an excuse, good doctor. There's something wrong with that woman. We need someone who can keep her in check. It's better to minimize the variables outside our control while we execute our plans. Moreover, I need to know her identity. Mm. If I'm lucky. <laughs> she could be an important pawn. 
And it's good to have more helpful friends when dealing with this matter. But honestly, the murder case is likely unrelated to her. Huh. I believe my standpoint. There's a rat in the family. Otherwise, why would Mr. Sunday arrange a private meeting with us? This isn't an interrogation, but a secret negotiation. We'll see. Using Robin's death as a bargaining chip, I'll win back my freedom and power. In the end, I'll ruin this beautiful dream and create the grandest death. But should you really be saying that to me, of all people? <laughs> if the chance of winning is just beyond this door, even if that chance is close to zero, well... <laughs> you can't win if you don't play, right? Ah, the charming audacity. <laughs> to think that you, of all people, might emerge victorious, dear gambler. Three chips are enough. All or nothing. Oh. Okay, time to meet Sunday face to face. Hmm. Hello, my dear Sunday. There he is. It seems my puzzles are too effortless for you, IPC ambassador. I appreciate your words. And I see you put a lot of effort into welcoming me, Mr. Sunday. However, this is no way to greet a guest. Well, this isn't an invitation, but a summoning. Before we speak, I need to test your character. I imagine this knowledgeable doctor friend of yours has been of great help. Yes? Certainly. <laughs> but you ought to know He's standing so far away. <laughs> He's already faithfully fulfilled his duties, hasn't he? Yes. The doctor has assured me of your noble character. Tassie? He you, like himself, a virtuous person who can be trusted by the family. Does he now? <laughs> I have come to know you very well as a person, Mr. Aventurine. You're diligent, generous, and willing to cooperate. The fact that you succeeded in overcoming many obstacles just to meet me gave me the reason to believe in your wisdom and courage. <laughs> the fact that you did all those puzzles and beat up all those baddies? Man, I really trust you now. But there's one thing I must ask you. That is, you've used your wisdom at the wrong place to meet the wrong person and put yourself in a situation where you shouldn't be. Witnessing a tragedy that shouldn't have happened. You don't look too well. Am I making you anxious? If not, then it means I'm on your side. If I wasn't mistaken, you'd just made a serious accusation against the family. Yeah. <laughs> no, you weren't mistaken. For depravity is creeping in around you. There's no need for us to be evasive. Let's talk about your sister. Your sister's talent is unrivaled in the world of show business. As you know, her voice has been out of tune since she returned to Penicone. What's more disheartening, she can't sing anymore. Thank you for reminding me, game, that that Robin is dead due to death, and that's the reason she can't sing anymore. <laughs> Who could be responsible for this? Many suspect the culprit is among the outsiders, but I know you hold a different opinion. Now your noble status has become a shackle, preventing you from apprehending the murderer and avenging your sister's death. You're feeling anxious because you're out on a limb. But don't worry, I'm on your side. I'm immensely honored by your concern for me, Mr. Aventurine, since you're so selfless and generous. I believe you wouldn't ask for anything in return, would you? Well, naturally, you wouldn't incur any loss from this. I just want to reclaim what is mine. Mm -hmm. My liberty and the personal items under the family's custody, the bag of gift money, and... The stones, right? The box in which the cornerstone is stored. Yeah, uh huh? And he's gonna use that to fucking transform or something. That's right. Cornerstone. I've heard it's a treasured asset of the strategic investment department. A sacred stone that seals the preservation emanator, granting significant power. 
and every liquidation specialist holds one. The preservation emanator. Mm. For an object so precious, it probably comes at an even higher price than other forms of recompense. Well, I'm sure you're aware of the high level of risk I'll be undertaking to bring the truth to light. Mr. Aventurine, when you are out and about, do you always make adjustments to your appearance? Your tie should be on the center line. Your shirt must not protrude from your vest. Hmm. Your trouser creases should be perfectly straight and always aligned with the tips of your shoes. Of course. But I don't, because it's not appropriate to do so in public. You should make sure everything is presentable and in order before leaving the house. I'm not the kind that takes risks. The cornerstone must be in the custody of the family. No room for negotiation. Oh, he's pissed. <laughs> he doesn't like that. Please, don't let me turn you down twice. Man, and Sunday's just fucking... <laughs> I don't know why, but I feel like he's just has boiling rage within. <laughs> like underneath that fucking smile. Sure, the gift money is good enough. I suppose you wouldn't mind that. After all, a merchant can't function without a bargaining chip. You compromised quicker than I thought. Unfortunately, it's a gambler that needs a bargaining chip, not a merchant. I can give you your gift money, but before that, I want you to tell me. Hmm. Tell me what? The fact that you can decisively forsake the box you asked for. What exactly is stored in it? Hmm. Oh, triple-faced soul. What? Please sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron. What? So that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. Wait, what just happened? <sighs> what have you done? Under the light of the harmony, all wickedness is revealed. I implore them to shed their light, and I'll ask you questions on their behalf. Next, you have 113 seconds to prove your innocence and gain my trust. Did he call upon the power of fucking harmony? And if I refuse to answer? Uh, you die? You can try. And we'll see if the harmony rejects you. Oh, shit. <laughs> Question. Do you own a cornerstone? Oh, fuck. <laughs> yes. It's, it's like a light detector. What a simple answer. Oh, you a raven, what? Understand that idle chatter leads only to poverty. No, no, not a raven, the fucking statues. What the what the birds are, I don't know. <laughs> Did you hand over the cornerstone to the family when you entered Panacone? Yes. Does the cornerstone you handed over to the family belong to you? Yes. Is your cornerstone in this room right now? Uh yes. Oh shit. <laughs> Is your memory free from any kind of tampering or deletion? Encompassing, but not restricted to the techniques of the Garden of Recollection? Uh. Yes. Are you an Avgin from Sigonia? Uh, Jesus. Okay, now, now it's an interrogation. Jeez. Yes. You even know about that? Jeez, the tables turn really quick. Do the Avgins have any ability to read, tamper with, or manipulate one's own or another's mind? No. Does it matter? Do you love your family more than yourself? Oh. Oh. Yes. Oh. All the Avgins were killed in a massacre. Am I right? No. Are you your clan's sole survivor? Oh. You have a sibling? You must have a sibling. You hate and wish to destroy this world with your own hands. I don't know. Interesting. Now, the final question. Oh. oh. <laughs> Can you swear that at this very moment, the Aventurine Stone is safe and sound in this box.
Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh. Of course. <laughs> Looks like we can get an answer. Open it, Mr. Aventurine. It's your last chance to defend your honor. Oh shit. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Rachel doesn't Please. fucking care. <laughs> uh oh, is it? Oh, it's not there. Are these what you're looking for? What? <laughs> Wait, what's that other zone? System hours ago, do like pavilion. Since you came as promised, learned doctor, does this mean that you oh, are willing to take the side shit. of the family in this farce? Ooh, Ratio betrayed him. What the fucking you reveal? You <gasps> convince me. I've heard you haven't enjoyed Mr. Aventurine's company. <laughs> I also understand that you're an avid learner who sees the pursuit of knowledge above all. In that case, you ought to realize that a competent scholar knows their position and wouldn't forsake more vital matters for the sake of petty pride. If you agree to assist the family, I'll share our research findings on the Stellaron. Mm. You must be quite aware that, besides the family, no other faction is willing to share such information. Hmm. Cut to the chase. What do you need from me? He agreed just like that? Just for the info at the Stellaron? Jeez, that was a quick folding. I need Mr. Aventurine's comprehensive plan. Haven't you confiscated his cornerstone? You can't expect a featherless bird to take flight. But I've also heard the ten elites in the strategic investment department have united progressing together in the interests of the IPC. You'll have to speak more clearly than that. <sighs> the cornerstone, which Mr. Aventurine surrendered. Oh. Was it really his? <laughs> you question whether he would entrust you with someone else's cornerstone. The Ten Stone Hearts aren't as united as you think. Cornerstones are significantly more precious to them than their very own lives. Ooh. But you know that he's a crazed gambler. The more vocal he is about it, the more cautious I must be. I never imagined someone would share his way of thinking. Honestly, you should see a shrink. <laughs> Bring it. The box containing the cornerstone is unique. And only IPC senior staff and related members can access it. But I happen to be among them. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I appreciate it. Unfortunately, your guess is correct. Okay, that's the Aventurine Stone. I get that much. But what hap what's a green stone there? <laughs> the Golden Stone. Its color and glow are similar to that of Klepoth's body. This is the very ruse he intends to use to fool you. He won't reveal to you that the Ten Stone Hearts chisel their own will into the cornerstones, granting them an unparalleled radiance. And this golden statue is also known as Topaz. Oh! Not Adventure. Never mind. And it belongs to Topaz. Topaz? Oh my god. Imagine Topaz is a fucking super form. Oh shit. So. Do you wish to confront him? Speaking of Topaz, where is she? 
I kind of expected her to be up here in, in this story, yet she hasn't made a move. Not at the moment. I'm more interested to know the location of his cornerstone. The safest place somewhere you'd never think of. Because he never intended to hide it. In fact, that cornerstone has been in your hands from the very beginning. What? In his bag? What? <laughs> Shit, just right there? Okay, so that's his stone. This bag. Mixing a cornerstone. More precious than life itself. With a bunch of worthless jewels. Disguised as a gift of money waiting to be confiscated. Oh. Is indeed in line with Mr. Aventurine's style. Then he makes up some trivial excuse, downplaying the matter, and requests the gift money. Oh. This is a gamble, one he's all too familiar with. Betting on your single misstep, leading to a total loss. Learn it, Doctor. I am grateful for your help. Shit. The family <laughs> will surely reward a righteous person like you. As for the villain... <laughs> I hope he retreats in humiliation. It was all a it was fucking all setup. To your friend with a keen eye, that I could add a blot of utter failure to your storied career. <sighs> Ratio, you wretch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so that's the reason he tagged along. I was wondering why he didn't just abandon him right then and there. <laughs> Finally shown your true colors, huh? Oh, and just to remind you, you currently only have 17 system hours left to live. Oh. Treasure your remaining time and savor the delectable aftertaste of defeat. Oh, can he not live out of stone? <sighs> you might as well explain yourself a little more clearly. What I performed on you just now was the Harmony's consecration. I figured, you yeah. Show allegiance beneath the illumination of their grace. Yet you acted willfully, uttering nothing but falsehoods, Ooh. transforming the consecration into a trial. I genuinely see no reason to absolve you from it. Wait, so everything he said was lies? <laughs> is this what the harmony represents? Or is it built upon constraint and coercion? <laughs> you misunderstand, Mr. Aventurine. Punishment is meant for the irreverent, but I have seen your resilient spirit, and thus I offer you the possibility of a new beginning. What new beginning? Throughout these 17 system hours, you will be unable to escape the dreamscape or contact any of your companions. You only have two paths before you. And it all depends on whether you can complete my test within the time limit. Oh great, now adventuring's the pawn. <laughs> Should you succeed, you will be able to coalesce into the harmony and be with your family. If you fail, you will suffer the wrath of the eternal centurion. Eternal centurion. Doom. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, sounds like I'm going to end up the same either way. I indeed do need a servant to help me uncover the evil hidden in the family from an external Fuck. perspective. <laughs> I will purge the evil from the inside and bring the real culprits to justice within 17 system hours. When the time comes, compare your findings with mine. If both our findings align, or if you can provide me more insights, then they will truly be able to grant you mercy and honesty. Shameless hypocrites. You took everything from me and still demand the truth? That isn't fair. Your carnival reeks with the stench of cash. Nothing is achievable without it. Like, geez, it really seems like... Yeah, I thought Aventurine was a villain, but now it seems like Robin has taken that place as the villain. This is meant to be an act of personal virtue, not requiring the family's support. Your bag is over there. Do as you please. I believe you can trade this bag of worthless jewels for everything you need. That's what gamblers excel at, isn't it? <laughs> Off you go, Mr. Aventurine. You are free. Free. I will wait here. For free in quotation marks. 
shit, man. <laughs> oh, he's gonna be pissed. He's gonna be mega this pissed. This isn't an interrogation or a negotiation. <laughs> it was blackmail. It's an outright execution. That too. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I do that, Mr. Aventurine? I'm just wondering what a passerby who stumbled upon a scene of a murder could have found out. That's all. <laughs> oh By boy. The way, before you go, I have a personal question. What is it now? You... Do you truly wish to bring about the destruction of this world? Oh. Dot dot dot. Kakavasha! Oh. Where did you go? Oh, are you injured? Oh, back to baby Aventurine. <laughs> I got it back, sister. You went to look for them? That's too dangerous. It's just a necklace. It's neither food nor water. We can survive without it. That's gotta be your sister. She has, yeah, she has, he has family out there. I can't live without you, little brother. Promise me not to look for those catechins again, okay? Sister, don't be afraid. The catechins are fools, but I'm smart. I played a game with them, and I won. Well, and thus a gambler was born. Won? What happened exactly? Tell me. I made a bet with them. The two birds in the desert and me. Who will die first? I won. They suspected me of cheating, but I didn't. I won fair and square. <sighs> of course. Of course you'd win. You've always been a lucky child. Gayathra Triclops must be watching over you. Damn. Also, this music right now, holy shit. This is this sounds like something you hear in Nier Automata. Holy shit. Oh my god, yeah, this music is beautiful. This is only Aventurine side, by the way. We still haven't gone back to the Trailblazer side. I think this is yeah, this might just be like the 2.0 Trailblazer mission, and it's just like I may have to end. Like, like halfway through, but then yeah, I probably will continue on like later on because we have only like one hour left. And knowing, uh, knowing this game, it's probably gonna be a bit longer until we complete that. But yeah, holy shit, it, it, this is like I'm just, I'm so invested in the story. It's looking so so good so far. But that's no reason to push your luck by going up against those those bloodthirsty, cruel catechins. Have you forgotten how mom and dad? Are my only family. I'm gonna turn up the volume here in a bit because yeah, this music is really fucking good. <sighs> I'm sorry, sister. I thought you'd be happy because mom left you this necklace. Aww. There'll be no next time. It is important, but not as important as you, my dearest brother. I don't blame you, but you must remember what Mom said. Pain and poverty are the trials of Gyathra Triclops. She has also granted us a chance. And that's your good luck, Akavasha. Your good luck is the most precious wealth we all Avgen have. You're a child blessed by Gyathra Triclops and can lead the clan to happiness. So always remember to protect yourself and never resent the pain and poverty you're going through, all right? Listen to me, and swear to Gyathra Triclops. Okay, we'll swear to Gyathra Triclops to protect this wealth. I don't know why, but Gy like, <laughs> Gyathra Triclops just sounds like a dinosaur. I don't know why. <laughs> it just sounds like a name of a dinosaur. Triclops was really watching over us. Then why did she not protect Dad when he was swept away by the quicksand? Yeah. After all, Dad went to the Catechins' land only to prepare for Gyathra Triclops' offerings. And where was Gyathra Triclops when Mom was shivering in our arms? Mom was still pleading for Gyathra Triclops' forgiveness under her breath till the moment she closed her eyes. Sister, everyone praises me for being smart, but I don't get it. 
If every rain pour was Diathra Triclops' forgiveness and grace, then how bad were our sins? So much so that we were born in this world of death? Mm, eh. Oh, speaking of Trailblazer side, yep, that's the end of Aventurine's POV. Um, excuse me. I can't seem to find any information on this artist in the Iris family archives. The photo you provided also doesn't show any matches. Oh, and here we are investigating Firefly. Holy shit, that whole section was so good. Dude. I kind of feel bad for Aventurine now. I mean, at first I was just like, yeah, fuck this guy. He, he's just sus as hell, but nah, and now I kind of feel yeah, sort of bad for him. Hmm, just as I thought. I'd like to ask. What kind of traces do people leave when they enter a dream? Are you referring to the records when you enter the dream pool? The equipment will monitor physiological indicators such as heart rate, blood oxygen levels, and body temperature in real time. This data will be included in statistics and handed over to the family for the screening of any data anomalies. Immediate action will be taken once any illegal behavior is detected. Is it possible to access these records? Feels like every move is being watched. I apologize. The hotel does not have access. Uh, this information is managed by the Bloodhound. Uh, we can only gain access if there's a problem. That means we're gonna approach your boy, Gallagher. Looks like nothing can be found here. At least we know who to look for next. We can ask the Bloodhound family for information. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Allie. By the way, is Miss Robin doing fine? We are looking forward to her performance. Yep. Fine? What does that mean? Is there something wrong with Miss Robin? The preparations for the Charmony Festival have been proceeding smoothly. <laughs> so, I guess are pretty good. I believe she will be able to put on a spectacular show for all of you. Yeah! A spectacular show from a corpse. Hmm. I'm sure. Sure enough. No one knows about Miss Robin. I'm not surprised. But that Miss Firefly is truly mysterious. There's no information on her in the hotel system. Even if she's a stowaway, she mm. should have a disguised identity after entering the planet. She's also in the running for the legacy. How is she going to sneak into the dreamscape unnoticed? Uh, is there any other way to enter a dream? Besides the hotel room's dream pool? The Garden Recollection, Stellar Hunters. Hmm. The Memo Keepers have abilities that are difficult for normal people to comprehend. In the memory zone of Penacony, they thrive effortlessly. A fact proven to us by Black Swan. Right. The hacker girl from the Stellaron Hunters used extraordinary means to unlock the Dreamscape Hotel's seal. According to the scene witnessed by her, it is likely that they are behind Miss Firefly's case. Hmm, true. The Garden of Recollection and the Stellaron Hunters. Both are possible. But what about the IPC? Since they want Penacony all for themselves, they're bound to have a plan. Right. <sighs> Who are you guys? Uh, what? The what the fuck? Okay, speaking of the IPC. Position, ready to execute armed evacuation operation. Oh, fucking. <laughs> the goofy music is coming in. Uh, uh, armed evacuation? Boss, aren't you drunk? What do you know? Uh, it's more efficient this way. Just don't let the director find out. Act first, report later. God damn it. Stood. Help, help me. I spent all my year end bonus on the snowball. I don't want my name on the department's major disciplinary notice. Hey, check it out. That place. Wait. Should it be the IPC workers from Bellabog? Wait, Topaz's company? To all guests, the IPC will be conducting special operations within the hotel. Oh my god. Please follow the staff in charge of evacuation to the designated safe zones. Or compulsory measures will be enforced. What? What are you guys doing here? Also, wait, wait, does that mean Topaz is here too? 
Yes, she is. Okay. You've been told not to drink during work hours. Okay, I was just questioning where she was. There he is. Take him back to the hotel room. I'll organize a meeting later to properly go over how this incident report should be written. Uh, hi. Miss <laughs> Topaz? I never thought I'd run into you on Panacone. Yeah, I'm here because some fuck stole my stone. <laughs> Long time no see, Astral Express crew. Adventurine has told me a lot about your happenings. Huh? Yep. It's fine. Do as they ask and try to avoid any conflicts with the family. Report to me before taking any action. Yes. All right. As you see, the IPC isn't very popular here on Panacone. Yeah, gee, I wonder why. The reality from the family is a mere facade. The former Frontier prison has turned around and cuffed its shackles on the IPC staff now. Only a Venturine, who carries an invitation, is allowed to attend the banquet. An entourage like us, we can only sit around in the reality hotel, unauthorized to even enter dreams. No wonder Aventurine's scrambling to partner up with someone. Oh. The IPC can't back him up in the dreamscape. His situation isn't optimistic, I hear. You're all helping to investigate some dirt on the family, are you not? Let me know if you need anything outside the dreamscape. The IPC always treats its partners well. Well, I can at least say for sure Topaz is going to treat us better than Aventurine would. Thank you, Miss Topaz. We're on our way to the Hounds to verify some intel. Perhaps you've had dealings with them? <laughs> yep. They're tailing us right now. Oh. Why not go and talk to them? They don't take the spotlight off me. Being constantly stared at is really uncomfortable. Yep, optional talk to Topaz and ask the Bloodhound for clues. Oh, How shit. does it feel to be in business with Aventurine? <laughs> I bet you're not used to it. I uh, forgot to see that, but yes, Trailblazer's aside now. That's just his style. Ball or nothing is his mantra. Yeah, huh? He's always cozying up to his clients while egging them on to undertake some dangerous assignment with him. But everyone has their merits, so I won't comment further. But Aventurine's luck has always been good. He's always closed all his cases without a hitch and basically never lost a gamble. Until now. <laughs> Which is why, on the issue of retaking Panacone, I'm watching with keen interest. He's that good, huh? It only works when all parties' interests are aligned. <laughs> of course. It's business, after all. What's important is where you're seated at the table. Yeah, huh? Master the two cases. <laughs> Apologies, but I don't have much info on them either. All I can do is ask you to keep digging for more details. Okay, well, yeah, okay, so we're now on. Yeah, Venture Inside is done, I think. Or, okay, so can't unlock it now. Need to do the, yeah, the Trailblazer side first before I continue on. Okay, slowly but surely making my way there. Oh yeah, let's go talk with the uh, yeah, the Bloodhound family. We're carrying out our captain's orders. What what do you want? Hey, an Australian <laughs> an Australian Bloodhound member, hey. We made a mistake last time, and we're working hard to rectify it now. We don't have time for anything else. Surveilling the IPC executive Topaz, ensuring that she stays put at the Reverie Hotel during her time on Panacone. We've got the right one this time. Wait, didn't I? Aren't you the one I met who was harassing Firefly? So that's it. They were the pair who were after Firefly. Yeah. <laughs> Assholes. Remember me? We meet again. <laughs> uh, hi. <sighs> it's you again. Back for more trouble? We're not afraid of you this time. Well, spit it out. Stop bothering us if you've nothing important. So you know each other. Uh, why do you keep running into people you've beaten up before? I know, probably proud of my charm. Uh, where's... We got business with your captain. Where is he? I need to pull some records for me. It's for official business. When's our lunch break? Mmm, hungry. <laughs> Fuck it. Oh, sheesh, why do you keep asking me that? <laughs> 
We're in the middle of investigating a murder case for the family. May we speak to your captain about it? Oh, uh, well... Well? Hey! The security officer instructed everyone to shut their traps before he returned from Dream's Edge. What murder? You'd better stop spouting nonsense. Oh, they don't know anything about it? Yeah, they, uh, that's right. We have nothing to report. Please leave. Looks like they're not going to cooperate. But they did at least tell us that the captain is at Dream's Edge. Oh, thanks for the info. Let's go. <laughs> Why don't we just look for the security officer then? It's probably Gallagher. Yeah. Uh -huh. She mentioned, right? Giga Chad. <laughs> His name's Gallagher, but I prefer to call him Giga Chad. Yep. We, we have nothing to report. Please leave. Gladly. Now let me go. What about you, Topaz? You gonna say the same thing? Continue to investigate the case. All I can do is sit tight in the real world. I look forward to hearing your progress. Uh, I'm not looking forward to seeing what's happening next, but all right. Let's go back in. Okay. Oh, around here. All right. Back to the dream. Oh, such tight security. Yep. I bet they're stumped by the case as well. Constructing dreams. Hey, there he is. Gallagher. Gallagher. Oh, where could he be? Hold on, slowly but surely make my way there. Hey, Gallagher. <laughs> Apologies. The Bloodhound family is running an investigation up ahead. No unauthorized personnel allowed. Hold on a minute. Oh. I oh. think I've seen you before. <laughs> the the gray-haired one. Yeah, I uh, beat you up while you're mad at me. Uh, with Firefly. <laughs> trouble have you stirred up exactly on Penaconi? Um, uh, this ain't, this ain't it, it, Chief. You got the wrong gal. That's right, it's a me, Clocky. Uh, you think you look alike? <laughs> How about a clockwork trick? Wait, are you for real? Yeah. Not possible. It was you the last time yelling about some clockwork friendship while... Beating me up with that silver-haired girl. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> I'm not letting you get by this time. Please leave. <laughs> or I'll have to get on my knees and beg you. <laughs> Please leave. Don't make me cry. <laughs> huh? What kind of heinous crime have you committed now? Hold on, sir. We have documents authorized by the family that would aid your investigation. If it wouldn't trouble you, could we see this Mr. Gallagher? Who exactly is this Gallagher you keep talking about? There have been a few people mentioning this name. Even the one with the gray hair. Is Gallagher not actually part of the, the Bloodhound family? Is he just pretending to be? Uh, he didn't send you all here? It was the security officer who dispatched us. And who That's is that? Uh, he'll do. He's the one we've been looking for. <sighs> Sorry, no can do. The boss said that since it's a matter of the family's reputation, no one's allowed through. Hmm. Everyone, please leave. There's really no need for us to make things difficult for each other, right? Oh, I think there is. We're really sorry for troubling you. <sighs> now let's beat them up. Let's think of another way. Ah, damn it. Another way. Uh, that's it. Yes. Did they say something about that? Oh, uh, what was it? Clockwork? That got this guy to change his mind. Can you perform it again? That. Yes. Uh, clocky magic. All right, I'm gonna make him sad. Just what I've been waiting for, but I can't abuse it for evil doings. Just what I would have been waiting for. Yes, yes, sure, sure. Okay. Uh, but you're also aware that principles don't sometimes don't matter when a person's in a good mood. Okay, so I got a mage Q. Hmm. So you're calm right now. Uh, let's go through all the emotions just to see the bonus dialogue. Yeah, let's see that. Let's make you happy. <sighs> Let me see what time it is now. Whoa. It's this time already. What? Time to clock out. And no one's gonna oh, stop me. Never mind. Happy's the right emotion. The highly principal member of the Bloodhound family laughed heartily and left the scene. Uh, well. What? 
<laughs> Man, oh shit, I should have made him sad and angry first. Oh well. <laughs> uh, this clockwork trick of yours, it's kind of dangerous. Damn, I almost want to restart the game just to see the bonus dialogue. At least he won't be getting in our way again. Let's go find that Gallagher and ask him the intricacies of the case. I was wondering what all the commotion was. Hey, hey. Huh. Oh, it's you guys. Gigachad. Since you made it here, what can I do for you? Also, I just noticed there's some like paw prints on like his cape over there. Re really embodying that wolf persona he has, huh? Hello, Mr. Gallagher, sir. Judging from your tone, it sounds like you were expecting us. <laughs> Miss Himako, you're too polite. There's no need to call me sir. <laughs> Sorry, something fell to the floor, but let's continue. Mr. Gallagher, you even know my name. Uh. Of course I do. You folks are from the legendary Astral Express and honorable guests of the Watchmaker. I had an encounter with this lady in the Golden Hour. Uh. <laughs> I remember that little silver-haired girl was there, too. I'm sorry for what happened to that kid. Yeah. Uh. That's exactly what the family has us ordered to investigate. We're sorry too. This is also the reason why we've come to visit you, Mr. Gallagher. The Express can't just overlook the death of that child. So we've decided to help the family get to the bottom of it, in the hopes of getting justice for her. The Nameless involved with the family. What an unpredictable twist of fate. Why? What's wrong with the family? Uh, it's nothing. On Penicone, everyone loves the family. <laughs> Most people. No matter how much one resists the beautiful dream, when the time comes, they too will find it hard to let go. Who wants to leave a warm nest? Just idiots, little kids, and inebriated fools. Mr. Gallagher seems to be getting at something. You got it wrong. I'm not. You want to discuss the case? Sure. Come with me. This is not a good place to talk. Let's go elsewhere. Okay. At this moment, on the other side. Wait, back to Aventurine already? Wow, okay. Trailer's part was, was short. Chilling Never tragedy, mind. This dream is still running effortlessly. Right, I forgot there was these two. <laughs> I forgot, yeah, this counts as a side. Other than the family of the Harmony, it's hard to imagine any other power in the universe that could sustain a building of such magnitude. Wait, hang on. Oh. The family itself is a huge, perfect building. Like a living idol. Each member of the family sees themselves as a piece of the divine puzzle, revolving around a singular core and a shared ideal. Mm. Under their command, they loyally fulfill their roles. Offering themselves while also receiving sustenance in return. Interesting analogy. Perhaps that's why Penicone's beautiful dream has persisted for so long. But the human body has its limits, and so does the divines. That doesn't sound like the kind of comment a galaxy ranger would make. <laughs> Just pointing out the facts. Mr. Yang will definitely have a better sense of what's going on than I do. Why do you say that, Miss Acheron? The beautiful dream is crumbling, but not because of a particular eon, a particular faction, or a particular visitor. That's collapse stems from a certain inevitability of human nature. The family refuses to acknowledge this, and it has ultimately backfired and become a catalyst. As people immerse their souls in the dreamscape, where consequences and pain cease to exist, and only ease and pleasure prevail, they draw closer and closer to necrosis. Regardless of the perceived bliss, death looms as the inevitable conclusion. Mm. Also, this necrosis will diffuse and spread. One piece of the puzzle's mutation will eventually cause the entire building to shake, break, and crumble. In the end, the dreams that people built in the name of freedom became the cage that imprisoned them. I'm sure you've gained a lot from this trip, Miss Acheron. Are you willing to share your findings with me? 
Of course. That's if I remember. She says this and her hand, or as her hand gently rests on the hilt of the hilt of her sword, and then quickly lets go in the look of an eye. Hmm. Hmm. Don't mind me. It's just a habit. Owing to events in the past, I've become easily forgetful. It's only when this sword is unsheathed that those hazy memories start to become clearer. Take your time. Just don't kill me. That should do it. I vividly remember everything that occurred on Panacone. Ask away. Regarding the moment of daybreak. The moment of daybreak. I've heard that's where the Dawn Factory, which processes the foundation of the dreamscape, is located. Behind the dreamscape's song and dance stand many imagination factories. Workers create all kinds of whimsical works day in and day out in their dreams, and they return to reality and sleep on a narrow bed in a room. A far cry from luxury, they say it will suffice. Experiencing the bizarre and motley dreamscape is the best reward. There I encountered a young woman who had just come of age. Uh. Perfect time to indulge in beautiful dreams. Oh. Her greatest wish was to one day move to the golden hour and see the magnificent garments she had woven with her own hands. For certain reasons, her wish was difficult to fulfill. Huh. But I managed to bring her a garment. Who? Um, okay, regarding the Gilded Hour, I guess we're not going to ask about that. Gilded Hour? It's said to be Penacone's currency center. Yes. It is a fortress-like financial city, the economic heart of the dreamscape. Hmm. The Papeshi people of the Alfalfa family are there to keep it running, sending blood that is made from money everywhere on Penacone. Blood that is made of money? <laughs> Everyone there is exquisitely dressed and always in a hurry. The greatest wish of the local Papeshi people is for their future generations to work in the Gilded Hour. I've never met anyone who is willing to talk. I could only stand at the crossroads, watching crowds of people hurrying like the wind through the jungle of steel, only to deposit the alfalfa credits that they'd earned into the bank's vault. I don't know if they would open the vault door, but before I left, I witnessed a well-dressed Papeshi person plummet from the sky. Uh all those around him continued on their way, unfazed. Huh. Okay, about the blue hour. I have no clue what any of these things are, by the way. <laughs> I hear the blue hour is very romantic. Do you have any tales to share? Perhaps Mr. Yang has heard. There is a large boat called the Aventide, anchored along the Sea of Dreams, where soft music and dancing persist endlessly every night. I ran into a wizened lady there. Yeah. She was at the dock, waiting for her long. Okay, not not Swan. Return, I thought Swan. <laughs> waiting for countless hours within time that stood still. In the humid sea breeze, she spoke of her own youth. Like many who desired wealth and love, they came to Panacone to pursue their dreams. Alas, her lover's consciousness was lost in the dark depths of the Sea of Dreams. Finally, she suggested we continue our conversation on a boat in the shallows. I agreed and boarded the boat with her. But she never said anything. Her eyes absent-mindedly gazing at the horizon for what seemed like forever. Finally, we retreated to the beach. Well, okay, about the moment of dusk. The dreamscape of chic, luxury, and consumerism, the moment of dusk. My companions have been there too. Then you all must have seen those who are attempting to realize their dreams. Or have realized them. Scattering money as if it were dust and betting it on all or nothing. <laughs> everything has a price. Yeah, I really wonder who, who would go there. Gold. Even dreams themselves. I saw an Intellitron there who was preparing to auction himself. When someone wins a bid under stipulated periods and rules, he would do the buyer's every bidding, becoming that person's very possession. Jeez. What? Somebody sold an Intellitron sold themselves. What? That Intellitron had been auctioned off a dozen times. Huh. And I participated in his 13th. That was the grandest banquet I had ever attended. But never again did anyone cast another glance at him 
This time around, there were no successful bids for him. That's everything. This is what I've seen and heard along the way. Hmm. Someone once said to me, Kanakoni wasn't like this a long time ago. Nor should it be. I've traveled through the reality and dreamscape of the planet of festivities. Watched the tides of night rise and fall when time stopped for people. Where the spirits of the rich and impoverished remain forever fixed on their own scales. This is why I think the collapse of the beautiful dream is inevitable. Hmm. There might be a way to change everything. Perhaps. But if this is indeed the world that people desire, if this is precisely why life chooses to slumber, should we still seek to change it? <sighs> Miss Acheron, now it's my turn to share a story with you. There was a man from my homeland who, at a time uh. when the world was grappling with deep, unhealable pain, uh. made a choice. Uh, Hawkeye Impact stuffed? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> He wove together the dreams of everyone in the world, linking people's dreamscapes, and shouldered this burden himself. From this, he created a giant, a spiritual Adam. Ooh, this music. I feel like, I feel like this is Honkai Impact stuff and it's just, I'm not getting it because I didn't play. And since that moment, the giant stood between heaven and earth, becoming the pillar of the world's existence. As a price, those who found it hard to move forward, who could not advance, forever lost their future. I feel like this whole section, this part right here, is referencing Honkai Third, and I'm not getting any of it. <laughs> they slumbered in a dream. Feel free to let me know, though. Of disaster and pain living out their days peacefully in the man's created utopia. And it is because of the wishes of those people who wished not to awaken that this spiritual Adam became unbreakable. And yet, you stand here right now. Which also means... that man failed. Because people must always move towards mm. the future. Even if human weaknesses make them pause when they truly cannot move forward, humanity will eventually seek a way to save itself. I wonder, like, if the person he's talking about is like Auto Apocalypse. <laughs> AKA the guy who heavily resembles Lorcha. And that man, he was never a failure. Like everyone in that world, he etched the possibilities of human nature into his heart. Man, I, I can already tell that most Honkai Impact 3rd fans are just going to go crazy over this part of the game. He was the sun chaser of legend, soaring towards the sky and embracing his final victory with his fall. He ascended to heights uncharted, only to come face to face with the sun, a place not visited by anyone before. His wings would melt because of it, only for him to fall into the sea. And after that, countless others would surpass him, soaring to even greater heights. A fitting metaphor for the Nameless's trailblazing spirit. Thank you, Mr. Yang. I know what you wish to confirm. The universe has innumerable similar, yet different, worlds. In these worlds, there are innumerable people who look alike, yet don't. I, too, have embarked on journeys, encountering old friends with familiar faces on different worlds. Uh? Witnessing their destinies follow paths similar to mine. So I will tell you, even if not completely similar, the story you just told, uh? it overlaps with my past. And within that abyssal dream, I ended that man's life alone. Mm. 
I am not who you think I am. Nor will my home be as fortunate as your world. I am sorry. It's fine. I don't mind, so long as I can alleviate your suspicions. Yes. <laughs> if anybody is like watching right now, feel free to let me know everything of all the references of Hop Hop Hunk Apex Third. Like down in the comments. Because I really want to know what they are. There's something I still wish to know, Miss Acheron. Under that representation of the hunt, exactly what sort of power is it that has motivated your solitary journey thus far? Mr. Yang, before answering that question, I wish to continue the previous topic. I like your analogy very much. Indeed, birds are born to fly. Birds are born to fly. In a distant past, their ancestors could only gaze at the sky in envy. I think that's one of the quotes a lot of Honkai Third fans quote a lot. It's like, why do birds fly or something like that? They saw that faraway ray of light from above the heavens, piercing through the clouds and blanketing the earth. And so, time and time again, generation after generation, the birds spread their wings and took to the sky, attempting to touch its ceiling. All because the sun was there. Then, what if the last bird finally soars into the sky, only to realize that the end of the light is not the sun, but darkness? All-consuming black hole, hmm. Then why, exactly? Do we even walk towards the light? Huh. Interesting. And Black the Swan. Huh. <laughs> Answer the phone already. <laughs> Long time no see. Yeah. Having fun on Penitone? Acheron. Who the fuck? This voice. It's not Constance. Could it be her companion? What, Cello Man? Though I don't know exactly what you are, or what you're up to, my bullets will find you. Uh. Until then, you best find a casket store on Panacone and ask the owner to reserve a good quality casket for you, imposter. Imposter? Imposter? I see. She gave my whereabouts to someone who's tracking Acheron, too. Who are you? Huh? Uh, did I make a mistake? <laughs> uh, <who> are you? <laughs> yeah, ignore those death threats. No, no, they, they, they were nothing. They were nothing. I'm the Garden of Recollections memo keeper. <laughs> Not bad. This is the kind of tough challenge I like. You that imposter's bodyguard? <laughs> Never mind. It's fine. I'll leave a round for you. So get that forehead clean and wait for me. I don't know what you're talking about, but you know Acheron, the Galaxy Ranger, yes? I have something to ask you. <laughs> Are you asking me to write your will? Sure. Go ahead. Wait, it's bullets. Is this Boot Hill? The guy drip marketed for 2.2? Not quite. I only want to ask, how exactly did she become a Galaxy Ranger? <sighs> She's clearly not a path strider of the hunt, but you are, aren't you? Yeah. Tell me, what's Acheron's deal? <laughs> sure. Heck, never thought I'd come across an ally. What a stroke of luck. <laughs> Sorry for all those death threats I gave you earlier. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll be on Penacone soon. Uh, memo keeper, go buy a bottle of his Donna's white oak. Good. <laughs> And I'll raise a glass to you. <laughs> what? Go buy a wine for me, woman. <laughs> that lady's past. <laughs> well, nobody knows. But if all you want is a simple answer, sure. You best get a chair and take a seat. 
That woman named Agron uh. is an emanator who should not exist. Who should not exist. Oh, yep, that's her like light cone background, I think. Huh. Also, yeah, I took a screenshot of that. Oh, back to Venturine now, okay. We're hopping all over the place. Jeez. Oh boy. An emanator who should not exist. What? Is she an emanator for like one of the dead eons, maybe? Or, hmm. What does that mean? Hmm. You look pale. Or is that also part of your act? Huh. I didn't think you'd have the nerve to show yourself. I thought this was exactly what you wanted. After all, I faithfully fulfilled my duties as you instructed. Just tell me if you can't hold on any longer. So, the genius of the Council of Mundanites wants to be my undertaker now. <laughs> <laughs> my, what an honor. Yes. And I'm pretty sure the people at the Strategic Investment Department would love to be notified of your death in due time. But let's not forget, you won't be seeing them, because I'm the manager of this task. Great. Then tell your people that Aventurine is ready to go in 17 system hours. Oh, you've got a lot of nerve. How exactly do you plan on completing your task while your hands are tied by the harmony? Well, my conversation with Sunday convinced me that there's a traitor in the family. And that they hold the secrets of Peniconi. So, I took the opportunity to set everything in motion. I even managed to recover the gift money. Oh. <laughs> Things haven't gone this smoothly since I walked through the doors of the Reverie. Now I'm only one step away from victory. Really? Let's just wait and see. How can you say that when you don't even have the stones anymore you need? Sounds like a very elaborate way of saying that you failed. <laughs> That's all I can say. Have you forgotten, Doctor? You betrayed me. Yeah, because I didn't want to work with you, dickhead. <laughs> what do you think? Go. Do what you must. I look forward to the sight of the IPC fleet surrounding Panicomi. You've achieved what you desired, haven't you? That's true, but what's your plan? Did you conceal an orbital support beacon in that gift money bag? Well, who knows? Maybe that's why I'm handing out cash even when I'm about to bite the dust. You are indeed a gambler. Mm. An insane one. At that. <laughs> yeah, opposite of saying yeah. completely. Who knows? <sighs> Fine. Here, uh, take this. What is that? <laughs> Open it when you're on your last legs. You'll thank me. What's this? Medical advice? <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Oh, and he's gone. <laughs> you catch on pretty fast, Doctor. Hmm. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. Asking me to solve a case without giving a single clue. How typical of you, you wing-headed scoundrel. But the way you're all on edge about that stowaway, <laughs> it's just as I guessed it would be. Uh. As for now, let the rain of wealth from the IPC fall evenly on everyone Ooh. mundane of uh, mundane nights insight huh it was this exquisite crawl holding a doctor's prescription with him dr ratio advised you to only unveil it in a moment of life and death you look distressed is something troubling you if so you can figure it out yourself <laughs> exactly what he says to ikat us hmm okay how much time do we have left Hey, Kari, welcome to the stream. Hi, Space, what do you think of the new quest at the moment? It's really, really interesting. Like, there's so many fucking stuff that's just going on, and... Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying the heck out of it. 
Especially that fucking stuff with uh, Aventurine and Robin. Yep, POV switch, Aventurine, Dance, Masquerade. Or... Wait, did I read that right? <laughs> Heaven is a place on Earth. Wow, okay, we still got a few more things to do here. Like, two more quests for Aventurine and uh, the Trailblazer. I think I'm gonna stop it here, actually. Uh, I'm gonna go back and, yeah, switch back to me. Uh, I'm not sure if this will trigger story stuff, but... Yeah, let's just go back to me. This haven of memories. Okay. Every touch. Uh, every can I continue, like, at all, or... No, I have to do Aventurine's POV. Okay. That's good in that case, because I do want to stop things here. I think, um, yeah, only for, like, 15 minutes to stream... <laughs> as of today, and yeah, I think this might be a good place as any to uh, stop for today. Yeah, I'll continue the rest of the Trailblaze mission tomorrow, and yeah, resuming from Adventuring's POV and also the Trailblaze POV, and yeah, seeing where the story goes from here, because yeah, I just have the feeling we won't be able to complete it all in today's stream, but yeah, that was a good, good fucking first part of the story, and I can't wait to see where it goes from here.